Hello friends. This is Fanfic Adventure. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto was reincarnated as Power Rangers and joined the Nitro Force? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. 17-year-old Naruto Uzumaki sat on top of his father's rocky head on the Hokage Monument, watching the repairs. Three days ago, Pain attacked the Leaf Village, leaving most of his hometown nothing more than a debris-filled crater. Many of the shops and homes survived with cracks going down them, but other than that, it would take months if not years to repair everything. However that wasn't what bothered him. On the day Pain attacked, Naruto discovered he was the son of the fourth Hokage. And ever since, he debated what to tell the others. It wasn't that he wanted to scream out he was the son of the fourth Hokage to the shinobi nations and rub it in everyone's face, he did. But it's what his father said about the nine-tailed fox attack the night he was born. While many believed it was a natural disaster that awakened it, Minato told him it was caused by a mysterious man in a mask. Naruto knew instantly who it was, the man called Tobi of the Akatsuki. It wasn't that he wanted the man dead, he did no questions asked, he just wasn't sure how the rest of the Leaf Village would take it. Naruto knew from personal experience that the Leaf held grudges and wouldn't think straight trying to hold them. If word got out about this, the powers controlling the Leaf Village would no doubt call every available ninja out on a manhunt, something that could lead to the Leaf Village's total destruction. Speaking of which, Tsunade had fallen into a coma healing everyone she could, and now that old war hawk Danzo was considered temporary Hokage. Naruto knew several members of the root Anbu were always following him thanks to his new sage chakra, obviously trying to prevent him from leaving. To make matters worse, he didn't feel like a hero in any way. The villagers looked at him like frightened animals, and he hadn't seen any of his friends since the invasion. However one person Naruto did his best to stay away from was Hinata Hayuga. She had confessed her love to him during the attack. However, Naruto just plain didn't feel the same way. After everything was settled, Naruto went to explain this to her. However Hinata instantly grabbed him by the face and tried to suck it off with A. Then Hinata went on about their wedding plans. Naruto told her he wasn't interested, however she didn't listen, believing Naruto was having a concussion, not thinking straight. Some hero I turned out to be. Naruto grumbled to himself. You're one to me boss. A voice said softly. Naruto turned to see Konohamaru standing behind him with a weak smile. Hey, Konohamaru, what are you doing here? Naruto asked confused. I came to see how you were doing, after everything. Konohamaru answered. I don't know how to answer that honestly. Naruto admitted somewhat quietly. It's all about the fact you used the fox's power thing isn't it? The boy asked sharply. Naruto looked at the boy confused. I kept bugging grandpa about why everyone was always mean to you and he told me. Konohamaru answered. He swore me to secrecy. Naruto stood up, smiled and ruffled the boy's hair. Thanks buddy, I needed to hear that. It was then, this brotherly moment was ruined by a series of wooden tendrils wrapping Naruto up, effectively subduing him. What the fresh hell? Naruto demanded. Be silent Genin. Yamato demanded coming up with his hands locked into a position, clearly the one using the jutsu. Several anbu of various kinds, Kakashi and Ebisu came up, and pulled Naruto away, and removed his headband. Hey, leave him alone, Konohamaru demanded, this doesn't concern you child. One of the anbu snapped, pushing him to the ground. We are merely dealing with a criminal. What? Konohamaru demanded, Naruto was thrown into the makeshift courtroom in the remains of the academy. Naruto growled looking up to see the three people who made his life a constant misery, Danzo, Kaharu, and Homura. Naruto Uzumaki, do you know why you are here? Danzo demanded, now wearing the Hokage's hat. Humor me, why? Naruto demanded, struggling against his binds. Because boy, you are on trial for aiding the criminal Orochimaru, the organization Akatsuki, and attempted assassination of the Rakage. Danzo answered with his superior tone. What? Naruto demanded. You have had several attempts to return the honorable Sasuke Uchiha back from the clutches of the Sound Village, yet none of them have succeeded. 
Homura explained. I wasn't the only person trying to bring. Naruto was slammed into the ground as he tried to explain. Silence boy. The Anbu restraining him ordered. The only reason he hasn't was obviously so you could manipulate our powerful shinobi to strengthen yourself. Homura reasoned. Clearly it is why Jiraiya of the Sanin died. And let us not forget how you allegedly defeated Pain, leader of the Akatsuki. Kaharu brought up. A feat several of our most powerful shinobi were unable to do. The answer is simple. He allowed the criminals to get in so they could fake his victory to lure Konoha into a false sense of security. Danzo reasoned. That's not even remotely true. Naruto shot back. However the Anbu slammed him back into the floor even harder. Then your most recent crime. Danzo said, revealing a wanted poster with Naruto's face from the Land of Lightning. You attempted to assassinate the Rakage last night, and the deaths of several lightning ninjas. That couldn't have been me, I was here in the Leaf Village, ask the people at the ramen stand. Naruto struggled. Be silent, Danzo demanded. Our next course of action is clear, we will send you to Hazuka Castle. You bastard, Naruto groaned as they took away his headband and weapons. Take him away, and apply the seal. Danzo ordered as two Anbu slapped something on the back of Naruto's neck. Yamato nodded, he altered his hand signs and said, Wood prison jutsu, Naruto's binding were converted into a prison capable of holding Naruto with just barely enough room. Four posts stuck out of it, allowing four Anbu to carry the boy away. As this was happening, Danzo couldn't help but smirk. It will be such a tragedy that Naruto will never make it to the castle. He said with a sneer. Of course, with the eight tails missing, the lightning village is greatly weakened. Kaharu agreed. Our forces are already en route disguised as lightning ninjas for the switch. And then we will transfer the nine-tailed fox into a proper host after they arrive at MT. Haukure, Homura cackled. The three were in unanimous agreement, prepared for a future war only they knew about. Let go of me, you freaks. Naruto demanded, struggling against the binds. They left the Leaf Village 30 minutes ago with intent of going to the Grass Village prison. However it was then something happened, a series of blasts went off, everyone turned to see a man made of metal run past. He had a gold UFO style head, red body with a pair of yellow lightning bolts going down it in a V shape which had a red light in the middle. Black segmented piping for arms and legs, and boots and gloves made of gold. In his arms was a strange silver and black case. A I Y E, -E the metal man said frightened with a digitized voice. The Anbu clearly didn't care, running past him. Hey moron stop he needs help. Naruto shouted. It was then everyone was blasted by a series of energy blasts aimed right at the Anbu. It was then they disappeared in a puff of smoke. Shadow clones. Naruto demanded surprised. It was then a series of strangely dressed beings attacked. The creatures were silver oni like creatures. They were clad in black robes, and one arm was replaced by a triple-barreled cannon. In their hands were katanas. Oh crap! Naruto shouted. They blasted the cage open, and Naruto rolled out. All right fellas, no more Mr. Nice Ninja. He put his hands together for Shadow Clone Jutsu, however the monsters held out their cannon hands, releasing a sonic blast, disabling the attack. Naruto actually stumbled back a few feet. Not good. Naruto said, only to be shot back several feet by another round of blasts. Naruto ended up landing on the UFO-headed robot. No cool big guy. The robot said. How do you think I feel? Naruto asked sarcastically. The Oni soon swarmed the area, circling the two. The robot appeared to be focused on protecting the case he had. Time to go. The machine said, lifting a panel on his arm, revealing a series of buttons. Wait. What? Naruto demanded. Just as the monsters were about to strike, both Naruto and the robot disappeared in a flash of light. The machine got away. A figure said, scaring the Oni. They turned to see a bulky gargoyle-like figure with a black wing-like shield in one hand, and a sword sheathed at his side. The master will not be pleased. Naruto landed face first into a decent-sized pile of trash, hard. Oh, gross. Naruto said trying to get the smell out of his nostrils. As his eyes were closed, he heard a honking noise, and instinctively ran to the side, narrowly dodging the oncoming metal box on wheels. What was that? Naruto asked. 
he saw several more in the middle of the black road in front of him. Okay metal man, what's going? Naruto began, only to see the metal man was gone. Joy. He groaned. Naruto then walked up to a nearby large green metal sign. Welcome to Meteor Falls, Colorado? Naruto read in confusion, he looked on to see a massive city, with buildings that would make the Hokage Tower dwarf in comparison. Then, Naruto realized where he was, outside the veil. During the few lessons he stayed awake in, Naruto learned the shinobi nations were separate from the rest of the world by a powerful veil. This veil would effectively place the shinobi nations inside a pocket dimension. The reason being was over 400 years ago, those who could mold chakra were hunted down and treated like monsters. So the original shinobi got together and created a barrier, thus creating the elemental nations. The world outside apparently focused more on technology, rather than chakra, something he admitted sounded cool. However, the teacher Naruto had at the time tried to tell the kids everyone outside the veil was an assortment of overly paranoid monsters. But hey, Naruto was never a good student. Hopefully I have enough chakra to get help, Naruto said, going to the roofs. Meanwhile near the center of the city was the Global News Network Station or GNN for short. It was the biggest name in televised news, and their star reporter, Angela Orlando was walking through the elevator right now. Angela only cared about two things, being on camera, and looking good publicly. Ask anyone in the GNN staff, she will step on anyone to get what she wants. Her long strawberry blonde hair was pulled into a low ponytail, and her black dress suit was wrinkle-free, as she got from her newest dry cleaners. Oh joy, it's the wicked witch of the news. One of her co-workers said dryly to another. You remember Harold down in receptions? Another whispered. She got him fired just because she got the wrong coffee order. Oh really? A member of the weather team asked. Do I need to bring up her old company anchor? Let's face it, the IT guy working the computer right now said. There's only one person we should feel sorry for the most. Carly, where are you in my soy mocha latte? Angela ordered. It was then a girl walked in. She was in her late teens with a yellow blouse and matching skirt on. Her brown hair was matted to her face in places by sweat. In one arm was the coffee she ordered, and under the arm of another was a stack of files. Her name was Carla, and everyone knew she hated being called Carly. Here you go, Carla said, exhausted. What's with the files? Angela asked uninterested. Those missing scientists I told you about, Carla explained. Kid, we've been over this, they aren't missing. Angela groaned. You need to listen. I know what goes on the news, and this. She took the files from Carla and threw them in the trash. This junk doesn't belong on the news. Now take the rest of the week off. Angela ordered. Okay. Carla sighed, leaving the office. Too cruel. One guy said. Meanwhile, high above the planet's atmosphere, a large black and white warship hovered near the moon. Walking through the metal hallways was the silver figure who tried to abduct the robot. Weren't you supposed to come back with someone Sylvian? A feminine voice asked amused. Sylvian turned to see a strange woman in a scorpion-themed battle dress and armor. It was long and black with a sickly green trim with a scorpion design on the front, and slits on the sides, exposing her long dark purple legs covered in black armor. On her right arm was black armor that looked like a scorpion's tail, complete with stinger-like blade attached to the back of her hand. Her left hand was covered in a shield that looked like two scorpion claws put together. Her black eyes were the only thing not covered by a violet armored gas mask. While her spike green hair was laying to the side. Don't start with me Toximora, I don't want to hear it. Sylvian ordered. So you do have the morphers? A mechanical voice asked. The two turned to see a mechanical knight-like figure walk through. He was taller than the other two by a considerable deal. He was light blue with silver and black accents. His visor was dark red. However the most menacing feature was his right arm, which was a three-pronged grab claw. Your silence speaks for itself. So what, like you morons helped? Sylvian shouted after a bit, flustered. Especially you Technoclaw, Mr. Last Great Warrior of King Mondo. Don't you dare disrespect the monarchy of the Machine Empire. Technoclaw ordered as his claw shifted around then extended, becoming a long energy blade. Oi, a third male ordered, 
The other three turned to see a humanoid armored black bat-like creature. He had two swords sheathed on his back in an X-shaped pattern. The master wants to see us. Coming a Lucardic, the three said nervously, the four knelt in front of a platform that looked more on the lines of a shrine. It was here a portal opened up, revealing a shadowy figure with dark red eyes. However all that could be seen was a thirteen horns arranged like a crown. Lord Damacron, the four said frightfully, am I under the impression that Alpha Ten escaped with the Morphers? Damacron demanded menacingly, I apologize master, there were complications. Sylvian insisted, but I did damage the robot's dimension transport system, therefore he's trapped in this realm. Well, I see even in failure, you can find a small sliver of success. Damacron said with a raging disappointed tone. Then a series of lightning bolts shot at the four generals. However I don't recall any of you being one step closer to freeing me. Apologies master, Alucardic insisted, we have those scientists looking into it right now. And what of that creature you created Toxamora? Damacron demanded, still electrocuting his subordinates. Someone call me. A large army tank themed monster walked through the doors. It had a series of Gatling cannons attached to each shoulder. Its legs were warped variations of tank treads. While it had a bucket helmet on its head. Shatter shot. Toxamora whined. What are you doing here? I just dropped off the newest nerd off at the lab, and wanted to see if you needed another. The monster admitted. It was here Damacron stopped punishing his lackeys. Finally, someone who's doing the right thing. It was then, a small black energy sphere emerged from the portal, then was given to shatter shot. Use this in case of emergency only, I can only summon one per day. Now for your next target, Alucardic said, giving shatter shot a folder. And take a squadron of Oni Knights with you. On the other side of town, stood the local racecar themed restaurant the Pit Stop Cafe, run by the always friendly Ricky. His younger brother Alan, and his friends Sam and Rebecca were always ready to help out. And here comes our favorite repeat customer. Rebecca said, as Carla walked in. Rebecca was a great a tomboy. She loved sports and anything that involved getting down and dirty. She was clad in a white t-shirt with a black open jacket on with blue jeans, while her dirty blonde hair was tied into a messy ponytail. Cute Rebecca. Carla groaned. Boss trouble again, Sam asked. He had dark red hair and was in his usual blue t-shirt and jeans. He was someone who loved mechanics, and anything to do with cars. Alan walked up not far behind. Alan had brown hair was in a green t-shirt with black highlights, and a checkered flag-like stripe on the back. Alan could easily be described as timid. However everyone knew he had a massive heart. What do you think? Carla asked sarcastically. I think, Alan began, you should tell your parents you don't want to work for her anymore. You know that won't work, Carla reminded. It was then, she noticed outside the window a woman run past frantically with someone in a trench coat. Hey, Carla said shocked, she was a colleague of one of those missing scientists. It was then, the creatures that attacked Naruto earlier followed her. Let's go, Sam said excitedly. Hey big bro, I'm going on a little break. Alan shouted. Okay, but be back soon, the lunch rush is coming up. Ricky ordered from the back room. Naruto was hoping from one rooftop to the next, though strangely he was feeling weaker with every passing minute. Aw oh man, Naruto groaned, rubbing his sore neck. It was her however he noticed something strange, a lady was being harassed by the creatures that attacked him before. It was then her companion's trench coat was destroyed, revealing the robot that had brought him to Meteor Falls. Cannonball, Naruto shouted, landing in between the robot and lady and the monsters. You owe me an explanation robot. Oh right, I forgot you were with me. The machine admitted sheepishly. Really Alpha? The lady asked. All right time to even the playing field a bit. Naruto put his hands together for shadow clone jutsu, but found himself given a minor electrical shock. He recoiled a bit, then undid the seal. Hey what's going on? Carla asked as she and the others showed up. The Oni Knights then noticed the four. With a primal scream, they charged. Oh damn, Alan sighed. Deciding on no other choice, Naruto sighed and ran forward. He delivered a series of punches and kicks, so the others could get away from the monsters. Go now, Naruto ordered. No chance am I missing this. 
Rebecca smirked. She ran forward and slammed her foot into an Ananite's face with a roundhouse kick. Oh what the hell. Alan sighed. Alan caught an Ananite's claw and threw it back. Sam then delivered a kick to the same one's side. Carla meanwhile tried to dodge another's attack. Okay, what's with the orange and black? Sam asked, somewhat disturbed and confused. I'm a ninja, got a problem with that. Naruto shot back. No, Rebecca said, throwing a trash can on top of three others. But they do. It was here the five were blasted by a series of energy rounds. Well, well some miserable humans I get to waste. Shatter shot cackled, walking up to the kids on the ground. Okay, this day just got worse. Naruto groaned. Alpha then grabbed the container. Alpha, no, the lady shouted. Ariel, we don't have a choice. Alpha reminded. He opened the container, revealing five black versus shaped devices that would go on one's wrist that had a series of buttons, a screen for communications, and a throttle switch. Each had a different colored stripe along the side. Naruto got the red, Sam got the blue, Carla got the yellow, while Alan got the green, and Rebecca got the white. Press the button, pull the level and shout Nitro Force, kick it up. Ariel ordered. Why? Carla asked. You want to survive, then do it. Ariel demanded. Okay, here goes everything. Naruto said, attaching the morpher to his left arm, then doing as she asked. Nitro Force. Naruto shouted then swinging his arm in a circular fashion. Kick it up. His right then hit the level. Beginning morphing sequence. A fire truck launched itself from the morpher as Naruto's body glowed white. It was then covered by a red body suit with a white chest, and white checkered flag design striped going down the shoulders and arms. The fire truck raced around Naruto's waist, creating a black belt with red tire treads in it, ending with a black steering wheel belt buckle. A sword was attached to one end, while a blaster on the other. A pair of white gloves and boots were soon attached to his hands and feet. While the fire truck crashed into the back of Naruto's head, creating a red square helmet with fire truck sirens on his head, and wheels on either side. A black elliptical visor covered the upper part of his face while a silver grill like guard covered his mouth. Finally, a red lightning bolt went diagonally across his chest with the number one on it. End morphing sequence. The four teens stood in awe of what they saw. Okay, that's all we have to do. Sam asked confused. Essentially, yes, now hurry. Ariel ordered. Uh, what am I wearing? Naruto asked confused. Oh great, a power ranger. Shatter shot groaned. Get him. The Oni Knights charged, however Naruto instinctively raised his arm and slammed it into an Oninite, causing it to crash into several others. Okay. Now this is cool, Naruto admitted. He noticed the sword hanging off one hip and pulled it out. It was a simple black hilt and grip with a silver blade. It extended to reach the size of an ordinary katana's. Now this I can use, Naruto said, charging at shatter shot. Okay, attach this like this, Sam said to himself, attaching the morpher. Nitro force, kick it up. In a flash of light, Sam was in a blue variation of Naruto's outfit except it had a lightning bolt going up, and had the number 2 on it. Another difference was the helmet was completely different. It had caterpillar treads on the side with a box-like finish on top, and a set of high beams over the squared-off visor. Cool, Sam drew the blaster on the side and fired a few rounds. This blaster had a similar design to the hilt of the sword Naruto was using. I could get used to this, Sam commented. Nitro Force, kick it up. Carla panicked and activated the morpher. A yellow outfit with a miniskirt, and the number three appeared on her being with black on the arms for the checkered flag design. Her helmet had more speed-oriented wheels and a pair of spoilers. While the yellow lightning bolt on her chest went horizontally. Okay, this is different. Carla admitted. The Oni Knights then charged at the Brainiac, only she delivered a series of kicks to them, knocking the enemies on their backs. Okay, Carla said timidly. Nitro Force, kick it up. Alan activated his morpher, and was given a green outfit with more of an earthy feel to it. His helmet had treads on it too, while the diagonal lightning bolt looked a great deal more jagged than the others in the number 4. Cool, Alan said, punching some Oni Knights. He brought out his sword and swung it at his opponents. Nitro Force, kick it up. 
Rebecca activated her morpher and was given a white outfit with a black checker design and lightning bolt in the number 5. Her helmet looked like a female version of Naruto's. Mama-like. She giggled menacingly. She pulled out her blaster and shot the foot soldiers coming in. How do you like us now freak show? Naruto asked slashing shatter shot with his sword. Turn your belt buckles to your left. Ariel ordered. You'll access your nitro weapons. Nitro weapons huh? Naruto asked with interest. He did as he was told, and his chest lit up, revealing another sword. However this one was a red double-sided tonto-like blade with a small nozzle at the tip. In fact the general design reminded Naruto of his blaster. Okay, Naruto admitted. Shattershot ran forward, and tried to fire a barrage of blasts at Naruto. The newly morphed Red Ranger deflected the shots with his new swords. I like this, Naruto said. However at this, he accidentally pressed a button on the side and the blade folded to the side. The end of the blade then opened up and extended, revealing two gun barrels. Naruto accidentally pulled the trigger, and shot a few blue-colored energy rounds. The two nailed the monster right in the thigh, and froze it solid. Aye, Shatter shot shrieked. Two cold red ranger. He shivered. Okay, I really could have wanted to know I could do that. Naruto said to Ariel. One problem at a time. She offered weakly. Dude, we have super cool weapons. Alan asked running up with Sam. How do we get those? Just turn the dial and they come out, I guess. Naruto said, pointing to his belt buckle. All right, Sam and Alan did the same. As the light emerged from their chests, Sam received a small blaster with two tank barrel on either side with a treaded grip. Alan received a large axe with two bulldozer treads for axe blades and a groove on the inside like a race track. Oh no, Shattershot groaned. Oh yeah, Alan said, grabbing his weapon with both hands. He charged forward and swung his new weapon at the monster. The axe made contact with the monster multiple times. Dude, tag in, Sam said, holding out his hand. Alan slapped it, then traded places. Sam ran forward, and shot a barrage of energy bullets. However it was here, an assortment of energy arrows shot right at the monster. The boys turned to see the girls running up, each with their nitro weapons in hand. Carla had a long bow with a pair of turbines near each side of the grip, while Rebecca had a large handcuff-like claw with sirens on the side. Now this I can use. Carla shot her new weapon forward and it made contact onto Shatter Shot's midsection. And I know what to do with this. Rebecca thrusted her claw at the monster. The claw itself launched at Shatter Shot by a cable, and grabbed him by the leg, where Naruto froze it. Awesome, she said with a smirk. With a mighty heave, she hoisted the weapon over her shoulders and tossed the monster into some trash. Nice, Carla admitted. Okay great. Now how do I switch this back into a sword? Naruto asked, holding up his weapon. Switch, do we all get that? Rebecca asked interested. Just press the button on the side. Ariel said, upset they weren't too focused on the monster. Cool, the other four rangers said. With a press, the weapons shifted. Alan's weapon split and expanded, becoming a pair of knuckle dusters with the cannons pointing towards the shoulders. Sam's weapon folded forward and the blades shifted back, becoming a crossbow. Rebecca. Claw opened up and revealed a wide gun barrel and a grip trigger. Carla's weapon split becoming a pair of katanas. Nice, Sam said. Another swarm of Oni knights attacked. Okay boys, let's play. Rebecca smirked. She fired a few rounds of her gun. The wide, but short range blast knocked several Oni knights into one another. Alan backed her up by punching a few away from her. I love a girl who can rock a blaster. Alan said with a smirk. Dream on boxer. Rebecca smirked, holding up her nitro blaster and shooting a shot near Alan's head. In the same shot, knocking over three Oni knights. I love these toys. Sam said firing a few large energy arrows. Several of the Oni knights fell on their backs as the shots made contact. And mom said video games never came in handy. Ah uh, yeah, I'm still new to the concept. Carla admitted, losing her grip on the swords more than once. One blade slipped out of her hands and fell to the ground. Carla bent over to pick it up. As she did, one Onanite that charged at her slipped and flew right over Carla. Uh, Carla asked confused, standing up. She looked around then noticed what had happened. 
I'm so sorry. Don't apologize to them. Naruto shouted infuriated L.Y. He wasn't mad at Carla. He didn't really know her either. But it was at the fact he wasn't too familiar with how to work his weapons. Naruto tried to fire a few rounds of his ice rifle again. However being that he was so unfamiliar, Naruto tried to hold the large weapon in one hand. The result was random patches of ice on the sides of buildings and the road. All right, no more Mr. Nick I.E. Shattershot said coming over, about to go guns blazing. Or would have, if it wasn't for the fact he slipped on one of Naruto's man-made ice patches. Okay rangers, I'm sending you some data via your HUDs. Ariel said, entering some information into her tablet. Finish this. Are who what now? Naruto asked as data was introduced into the five rangers' helmets. Naruto almost fell over in shock over what happened. Cool, Carla admitted. Alan and Carla switched their weapons back to blaster mode. Sam grabbed Naruto's rifle. What's going on? The ninja asked confused. This, Rebecca said with a smirk. Naruto's rifle went into Sam's crossbow, while Alan put his blaster under the opening of that. Carla placed her bow across the barrel opening, while Rebecca placed her spreader at the opposite end. Naruto somehow ended up with the massive blaster. Meet the Grand Prix cannon. Alpha explained enthusiastically. Cool, the four civilian rangers said in awe. Okay, how do I work this thing? Naruto asked confused. The four rangers fell over anime style. Seriously, Rebecca demanded. What? Ninjas don't use this stuff. Naruto groaned. Ariel was silently grateful the monster was still slipping on the ice patch. Oh just give me that, Rebecca said in annoyance. She tried to grab the amalgamated blaster from his hands. However in the struggle, a massive multicolored energy ball shot out from the multiple openings. Naruto and Rebecca fell back and the attack was shot down near Shatter Shot. The resulting explosion sent him flying through the skies. Oh come on man, the monster shouted as he was sent through the air. Well, Naruto said awkwardly. That works. Uh, I should probably get back, my brother will be worried about me. Alan said sheepishly. Good idea, I don't want to run into the Wicked Witch of the News anymore today. Carla said in agreement. So, how do we get out of these outfits? Sam asked confused as he and the others went to the pit stop. Standing behind the register of the restaurant was Alan's older brother, Ricky. Many people saw him as an older Alan with shaved black hair. A former Marine, he was discharged after a training accident caused by several members of his platoon broke his leg. The resulting injury never healed right, as such he walks with a limp. Said man was clad in a black t-shirt with the Pit Stop Cafe logo on the back, and blue jeans. A bandana was presently wrapped around his head. A big bro, can you come to the back room? He heard Alan say, this is important. I swear, if you brought home another dog, Ricky said going into the back to see the newly created team of rangers sitting in the back room without their helmets on. Among them was a robot and an attractive woman. Okay in order of least important to most. Ricky began. What are you all wearing? He pointed to Naruto. What is up with those kick-ass face tattoos? Ricky gestured Alpha. Is that a legitimate robot and most importantly of all? He turned to Ariel. Are you single? Really? That's how you prioritize? Ariel asked infuriated. Meanwhile on a street corner about a mile from the pit stop, a now busted up garbage dumpster was now rattling. Coming out of it was the now groaning shatter shot. He paused a moment to see Sylvian now standing above him. Tell me the next words that are going to come out of your mouth isn't Power Rangers. He demanded. Shatter shot nervously shrugged. Oh I am so going to get punished for this. Sylvian thought horrified. Okay so let me see if I got this right. Carla said after they had been demorphed and relocated to the loft on the upper levels. Naruto is a ninja from a pocket dimension with a giant demon fox thing in him, and we are now heroes called Power Rangers. Right, Dr. Ariel Jones began, I was a part of a research team that was looking into the multiverse theory, where we learned about the elemental nations. During our research, we all met Alpha and learned the existence of Damacron a powerful demonic overlord who controlled a massive army and laid waste to several galaxies. So what happened to him? Naruto asked confused. He learned of a relic called the Amulet of Eternal Vision, which grants the user the power to jump dimensions. Alpha explained, 
showing the image of a large amulet with 12 different colored gems around one large rainbow colored diamond from a projector on his wrist. However, just as he obtained this relic, his younger brother, Lord Zed, betrayed Damacron, and placed him in a pocket dimension and the amulet was shattered, with each jewel spread throughout this planet's surface. We learned recently, that the barrier that kept Damacron at bay has weakened, and it is possible for him to jump to this world if he can get at least three of the fragments, and that's not including the core diamond. Ariel explained. So what, does he go home then? Ricky asked, partially believing this. No, Alpha answered. Lord Zed and countless others have been dealt with by other teams of Power Rangers. Alpha showed several other multicolored protectors. Not just on an alternate Earth, but other planets as well. Realizing this, my research team and I began construction on a new team of rangers, the Nitro Force. Ariel explained, with Alpha's help, we designed a new arsenal and everything. And they aren't here because. Alan asked confused. When the Nitro Morphers were finished, Domicron's followers attacked the base where Lady Demetria was in order to gain them, I just barely escaped and my dimensional transit system is damaged beyond repair. Alpha explained. Okay that's great and all, but I can't help you. Carla said, giving up her morpher. I am by no means a fighter so. You don't have a choice. Ariel interrupted. The morphers have a DNA lock mechanism. When you morph for the first time, you are bonded to it. So that's why you didn't want Alpha to give us these gadgets. Naruto summarized. Ariel reluctantly nodded. Carla started to cry in fear at that. She was a thinker, not a fighter. Heck, she didn't even fight with her brother over the last cookie in the jar. My team was attacked and captured in hopes of freeing Damacron, I barely escaped with Alpha's help. Ariel explained, now we have to find those fragments, otherwise, it's game over for everyone. Sam said in fear, so what are we waiting around here for, let's go get him. Naruto said enthusiastically, not dressed like that you're not. Rebecca pointed out, you're dressed like a ninja, and as far as anyone else in concerned, ninjas don't exist anymore. What? Naruto asked confused. She's right. Ariel agreed. Also as a safety measure, not only shouldn't you mention you're a ninja, but also you all need to avoid saying you're rangers. Why? Sam asked confused. Because the government will love to gut you all. Ricky said understanding. I knew a few higher ups I knew in my marine days that would love your powers, and we can't have them playing with them. Fine. Naruto said putting his head down as Rebecca grabbed him. You too. Ricky said pointing at Sam and Alan. Downstairs, and take care of the tables, now. All right, all right already. Sam said going with Alan not far off. Carla went off too, as she came down to the pit stop for lunch in the first place. Ricky, Ariel reluctantly began. How much do you know about car repairs? Why? Ricky asked confused. His answer was being shown her tablet with some very interesting specs. Me likey. How did you talk me into this? Naruto groaned as he walked down the street in his new look with Rebecca at his side. Naruto was now clad in a red t-shirt, blue jeans, red sneakers, and a black jacket with red flames on the back. It had been just over a day since Naruto had come to Meteor Falls, and things hadn't gone as smoothly as he had hoped. Aside from another shopping trip with Rebecca, no one else had any ideas on where to start looking for the amulet fragments or the monster they fought earlier. Because, like I told you, ninjas don't exist out here. Rebecca said keeping her voice down. You need to blend. Whatever, Naruto said, putting his hands behind his head. Geez whiskers, you need to lighten up. Rebecca said with a groan. Forgive me for not being cheerful. Naruto said sarcastically, but not 24 hours ago. I was convicted of a few crimes I didn't commit. Fair enough, Rebecca said with a shrug. It was here a beeping noise went off on the duo's wrists. Rebecca and Naruto nodded, and dashed into an alley. Rebecca brought the morpher at her wrist near her mouth. What's up? Rangers, get back to the cafe, Ariel said over the communicator. You're never going to believe this. We're on our way, Naruto said. The two ran out of the alley, and in different directions. Oi, Naruto, Rebecca said impatiently, right, still new in town, Naruto said sheepishly. The two ran off in the same direction this time, however, passing the coffee shop, 
Naruto had the unfortunate pleasure of bumping into someone. Said someone dumped her coffee over herself. Oh I'm so sorry, Naruto said apologetically. Well you should be, the woman said enraged. Do you know how much it costs me to dry clean this top? Ah uh, no, Naruto admitted. More than you make you peasant, the woman said rudely. The woman walked off with her assistant not far off. Boy, what a bitch, Naruto said turning to catch up to Rebecca, who paused to see the events unfold. Well Carla's not going to like you too much, she said. That was the wicked witch of the news herself. Oh, oops, Naruto shrugged. The duo made it to the back room, where Ariel was waiting for them. About time, now follow me to the basement. There isn't a basement, Rebecca said confused. I know, I've been working here for over a year. There is now, Ariel said smugly. She handed the two of them colored car keys to match their ranger colors. Ariel took out a pure silver key, and put it to a decorative red door on the wall. It flipped upward, revealing an elevator. Coming. Okay, Naruto said enthusiastically. The three entered the elevator, where in a flash, brought them to a lower floor. When the door opened, the two rangers' mouths hit the floor. The room they entered was something straight out of a sci-fi movie. It was a large silver multi-leveled room with several sub-chambers every so often leading by black stairways. Among them, Naruto and Rebecca could barely make out was a workout room, an empty room, several for spare bedrooms, and what looked like an infirmary. The center of the room had a series of consoles and screens monitoring various parts of the city. A work table with some advanced looking tools was off to another side, with a large white panel on the ground, next to five shutter doors. To another side was a massive garage door, clearly leading out of the area. Several spotlights shined from above, giving the area a futuristic shine. Presently Alpha, Ricky, and Carla were working on some computers, while Alan could be heard counting reps for Sam in the workout room. Rangers, welcome to the Cyber Garage, a high-tech, off-the-grid base perfect to store your equipment. Ariel said with a proud smile. Alpha and I threw this together. Okay, how did the two of you do this? Naruto asked confused and awestruck in the same breath. The robot works fast, what can I say? Ricky said smugly. You're okay with this? Rebecca asked confused. You normally can't stand a different style of napkins. Not at first, but you guys need help stopping this Damacron guy. Ricky admitted. So what's our first move? Naruto asked excitedly. Oh right, that, Ariel said sheepishly. We found out one of the amulet's fragments is here in town. Ricky said taking over. Only problem is we don't know where. What? Rebecca asked confused. The energies it gives off are too difficult to detect. Carla admitted, going over some screens. So Ninja Boy, Alan said, coming out of the workout room with a sweat-covered Sam. You got a game plan. Why me? Naruto asked confused. We voted you should be leader. Sam said with a smirk. What? Naruto asked confused. You have the most combat experience. Ricky reminded. But, Naruto began, only for an alarm to go off. We got Oni Knights attacking, Carla began, looking over the computer she was on. A block away from Evergreen Heights. That ritzy gated community, Sam asked confused. Well then, let's go. Naruto said with a smile. I know the way, Carla said. My boss lives there, and I've had to drop off her dry cleaning more than once. The rangers left with Naruto and Rebecca lagging behind a bit. Are we going to tell her? Naruto whispered. Later, Rebecca said. The fully morphed rangers made their way to the area, to see about twenty oni knights trying to climb the wall. Naruto instinctively went to observe from the trunk of a tree. The other rangers followed. Wow, you know I heard not everyone can get in, but this takes the cake. Alan said with a smirk. Well then, let's bust out the nitro weapons and go full out. The blue ranger said with a smirk. No, we don't want to attract unwanted attention or hit civilians, hand-to-hand -hand combat only. Naruto ordered. Aye aye captain, the green ranger said with a fake pirate accent. Oh no, a voice demanded. Toxamora then jumped down from the tree, with the Lucardic coming in. So you lot are the pitiful rangers huh? And you two are? Naruto asked confused. I am Toxamora, one of Lord Damacron's generals. The scorpion-themed villainous introduced. 
And I am a Lucardic, the vampire villain explained, drawing his swords. Now for the good of our master, we cannot allow you humans the right to interfere with his return. So screw holding back, Sam asked Naruto. Screw holding back, Naruto confirmed, holding his Excel blade and nitro weapon in melee mode. Sweet, Sam said, pulling out his blaster mode weapon. The other rangers followed through with their respective weapons, with Alan having his axe, Carla having her bow, and Rebecca her claw. Let's go, Alan shouted excitedly. The green ranger ran ahead of the others. Wait, Naruto began, only for the others to dash forward too. Now I know how Kakashi Sensei feels. He grumbled. A Lucardic came up and slashed with his own two swords. Naruto shifted his forward to interlock the blades. Naruto pushed him back and swung his Excel blade. It looks like I have found a worthy opponent. A Lucardic smirked, sidestepping the attack. I almost never hear that. Naruto admitted. The two clashed blades constantly. However an Onanite was blasted into a Lucardic courtesy of one of alan's swing uh four he offered nice to know a teammate has my back naruto thought really white ranger is that the best you can do toxamora asked sarcastically effortlessly dodging rebecca's claw no matter how much she tried she couldn't hit the scorpion themed villainous now let me show you how to really use a blade toxamora's gauntlet stinger extended and she tried to stab rebecca however Rebecca drew her Excel blade and blocked the attack. Want to know what I love most about this claw? Rebecca asked rhetorically. It doubles as a blaster. The weapon shifted, becoming a blaster, and the White Ranger pulled the trigger. However, Toxamora moved her head slightly to dodge the attack. Pitiful, Toxamora said, knocking the blaster out of Rebecca's hand. The scorpion themed villainous then threw the White Ranger to the ground. Well, good thing I've got more than one gun. Toxamora effortlessly deflected all the attacks Rebecca fired from her Excel blaster. Well this is easier than I. Toxamora began only for a stray energy arrow to nail her in the back. Sorry, Carla apologized, I'm still new at this. Don't worry, I know how you can make it up to me. Toxamora said with a growl. She charged again, trading opponents. However, Naruto's nitro weapon blocked the attack. Not so fast ya toxic freak. The Red Ranger said with a smirk. The other guy, Carla asked confused, covered, Naruto said. Sam and Alan had decided to take Naruto's spot in fighting a Lucardic. Sam delivered an assortment of punches armed with his knuckle dusters on. Take this, a Lucardic demanded, swinging both his blades. Sam caught the attack on the guards and then shoved the bat-themed general back. Alan then shifted his axe into a crossbow, and fired a few rounds. However a Lucardic leapt over the oncoming attack. Okay, didn't see that coming. Alan admitted. Now then, a Lucardic got down into a low stance, his arms extended as were his blades, giving off the appearance of a bat in mid-flight. Blood Moon Dance. With his swords glowing red, a Lucardic charged at incredible speeds, his sword swinging in every direction. Before anyone knew it, all five rangers were on their backs in pain. Okay, that hurt. Naruto groaned. How did that even happen? Carla asked confused. I love and hate how you do that in the same breath. Toxamora said with a smirk. However it was here, a Lucardic dropped to his knees in exhaustion. I won't be doing that for a while. A Lucardic gasped in pain. Now, let's finish the job. Toxamora said with a smirk, revealing her stinger gauntlet. It was here, several Oni knights helped a Lucardic to his feet. Well sorry Sting Queen, I don't die so easily. Naruto groaned getting to his feet weakly. He drew both his swords and charged. Toxamora blocked his Excel blade with her shield. However Naruto launched himself into the air, pushing Toxamora back. The other rangers drew their Excel blasters and fired. The hits actually sent the scorpion back a ways. Well that worked, Carla said with a shrug. Toxamora was about to retaliate, when Sylvan showed up. She's gone. The gargoyle said with a grunt. And the fragments with her. Fine. Toxamora said with a curt nod. Until next time rangers. With a wave of energy, the generals and oni knights vanished. What? Naruto asked confused. Back at the cyber garage, the five rangers stumbled out of the elevator. So, how did it go? Ricky asked, not looking up from his work on the tablet. 
Disastrous. If anyone needs me, I'll be blowing something up. Naruto groaned, walking into the training room. That bad huh? Ariel asked confused. I would have helped but the satellite feed isn't on yet. It was here, several shots of an Excel blaster went off. Ah come on man, Naruto bellowed. He is a horrible shot. Sam mentioned. Hey, was that tank monster there? Ricky asked confused. The one you guys fought yesterday. Come to think of it, no. Carla thought confused. Naruto and Rebecca only blasted it away, not destroy it, so where is he now? Just then, her cell went off, pulling it out she groaned. I got to go, my boss needs me at work. Carla rushed out the door, hoping to end this quickly. Problems all around. Alan groaned sitting on his seat. And we still don't know where Doc's pals are. I told you not to call me Doc. Ariel said not looking up from her work. Carla walked out of the elevator at GNN headquarters, straightening her look the best she could. Martial artist superheroes do have a tendency to attract sweat. She groaned to herself. Carly. Carla cringed at that. Get in here. I hate this part. Carla whispered to herself. Several co-anchors couldn't help but sympathize, as she entered the office. You called ma'am. Yeah, I did, you're fired. Angela said not looking up from her paperwork. What? Carla asked confused. Your performance review came up, and quiet frankly, I was disappointed. Angela said, standing up, revealing her new necklace. It was a gold chain with a large silver-colored gem in the middle. Carla noticed the similarities to a picture she had seen the day before. Now to play dumb. But I've done everything you asked. Carla reminded. But you haven't been in often enough. Angela stated nonchalantly. Only because you told me to take multiple days off. Carla stated firmly. Now Carly, do I have to call security? She asked with a smirk. It's Carla you uptight bitch. Carla shot back, then left the office, leaving a bewildered Angela. The Yellow Ranger calmly entered the elevator and hit the button for ground floor. That just happened, she cheered to herself. However in the excitement Carla finally realized the problem. Carla had just been fired, and her ex-boss now had one of the fragments of the amulet. Damn it, Carla groaned. As she exited the building, she pulled out her phone, intent on giving the bad news, when a familiar assortment of bullets went off. Let's get us a gem. Shattershot cackled, himself, a few Oni Knights, Technoclaw, and Sylvian started tearing into the building. Great, now I got to deal with this, Carla said, dashing into the alleyway. She brought her morpher to her lips. Guys, get down to GNN we got a problem. However, before the Yellow Ranger could say anything else, some Oni Knights attacked. One swung its claw, which Carla barely dodged. Another fired a volley of energy blasts that nailed her in the stomach. The resulting attack sent her flying into the alley further. Ow, Carla groaned. She then turned to her morpher. Guys, help. Back at the cyber garage a few minutes prior, Naruto was still trying to get the hang of his Excel blaster. He word, trying. Basically he was hitting everything but the target. Wow, your aim is terrible. Ricky said with his arms crossed. Geez, what gave it away? Naruto asked sarcastically. Your grip is wrong, that's half your problem. Ricky said, walking over. He adjusted Naruto's grip, then took a few steps back. Naruto fired again, actually hitting the bullseye, although near the edge. That's, better, Ricky said with a shrug. What is it big guy? Naruto asked confused. I was going to ask you the same thing Naruto. Ricky admitted. What do you expect? Naruto admitted glumly. I'm responsible for being the team leader to four people I've never met before. I'm a wanted man in my home country, a place no one even believes exists, and there is a real chance the whole world is going to be under the rule of some dimensional warlord. And you don't really know how to deal with it all. Ricky finished. Naruto nodded. Kid, I've been through two tours of duty, and not even I would know how to deal with it. Who would? Naruto asked with a shrug. Good point, Ricky said. Rangers. Ariel shouted panicked. Naruto and Ricky dashed out and turned to see the scientist distraught. Carla just called. Shattershot and some others are attacking GNN headquarters. Let's go, Sam said determined. The rangers raced out the door, intent on saving their friend. Activating the teleporter systems, Alpha said, typing a few keys in. 
Teleporter. Alan asked confused. Before the four rangers could say anything else, they were engulfed in a light of their respective colors. In a flash, they disappeared. You know they're going to hate you for that. Ricky called down. Worth it. Alpha chuckled. The four landed about a block away from their target, with green faces as they tried to stand. Well, I feel like throwing up. Rebecca groaned. When the four got to GNN, the place was a madhouse. Oni nights everywhere, while Shatter Shot was blasting down the front doors. Carla. Sam shouted in fear. He ran down the alleyway and picked up the fallen yellow ranger. How did you guys get here so fast? Carla asked, trying to sound ungrateful. Long story short, teleporter. Naruto said, we have a teleporter. Carla asked confused. Apparently, Rebecca said sarcastically, I left my lunch on the other street if you don't believe me. Whatever, Naruto said rubbing the back of his head. Dude, no doubting yourself now. Sam said firmly, we need you. Naruto looked up, and saw the other three rangers agreeing with the blue. Naruto smiled, oh what the hell, let's get Morphin. Now you're speaking my language. Rebecca said with a smirk. The five made sure no one was watching. Nitro Force, kick it up. The five activated their morphers, becoming the Nitro Force Power Rangers. Let's do this, Naruto said, drawing his sword. Knock knock, anyone home? Shatter Shot cackled. Sorry, she doesn't want Girl Scout cookies, believe me. Carla said running up. Well I'll be, if it isn't the pathetic rangers. Sylvian said, turning his attention to the five heroes. Yeah, and still the ones who are going to take you down. Naruto said with a smirk, drawing his blades. Oh yeah, Sylvian shot back. He was about to charge at the Red Ranger, when Technoclaw put his extended blade claw in the way. No, he's mine, Technoclaw said, charging. He swung his blade at Naruto who sidestepped. For the glory of the Machine Empire. Technoclaw swung his energy blade again, releasing an energy shockwave. Naruto barely made it out of the way, landing on his back. Before Naruto knew it, the robot had swung his sword again. Naruto blocked it by crossing his swords. Who, or what are you? I am Technoclaw, the last great warrior of King Mondo. The robot said snidely. Really? Naruto asked sarcastically, kicking the machine off him. He had low standards. Do not disrespect him, Technoclaw declared, swinging rampantly. The machine attacked Naruto at full force. Well, you're having fun, Carla said sarcastically. Using her katanas, Carla was blocking every attack Sylvian was dishing out using his rapier. I must admit Ranger, you've proven quiet the challenge. Sylvian admitted. Thanks, I'm still new at this. Carla admitted, kicking the monster away. Using her claw, Rebecca wrapped up several Oni knights. And away you all go. With a mighty heave, she tossed them a great distance away. The other boys got stuck handling Shatter Shot. Alan had dealt a powerful kick to the monster's side, allowing Sam to shoot the monster. Okay, why is no one out here? Sam asked confused. We have weapons of mass destruction, and we're fighting evil monsters. Probably Her Majesty is trying new samples of perfume. Carla said, dodging more of Sylvian's attacks. Hey Angela, some people are outside fighting monsters. One man told her. Oh please, it's just some cosplayers looking for attention. Angela said firmly, not looking up from her paperwork. But, the man said, Angela shot her a glare that clearly said, get out of my office. Several members of the crew decided against her words, and went down to see the full extent of the damage. The five heroes had the monsters on the ropes. Who do you think you are? Sylvian demanded infuriated. We're the Nitro Force Power Rangers, the guys that are going to stop your master from entering this realm. Naruto declared. Rangers, Ariel said over the comms. It's time to finish this, and don't worry Naruto, this time it's more your speed setting. She entered some commands into the computer and sent data into the HUDs. All right Rangers, let's bring them together. Naruto ordered as everyone switched their nitro weapons to melee mode. Rebecca's claw attached itself upside down onto the base of Alan's axe, while Sam's knuckle dusters attached to the grip. Carla's katanas attached themselves to either side of Naruto's sword. That combination attached itself to the top of the axe. Grand Prix Saber, 
The five declared in unison. Not good. Sylvian groaned. Naruto grabbed the weapon and swung it, releasing a powerful shockwave slash. The attack sent the three monsters flying. However, the orb Damacron gave to Shatter Shot rolled off him. A dark flash of light engulfed the monster, turning him into a 50-foot tall titan. Now this is some heavy artillery. The monster boomed. Uh, guys, Carla said into her morpher. Don't worry, Alpha's already got you covered. Ricky said with a smirk. Now introducing the Nitro Zords. Alpha said, inputting some commands. A large portal opened up, revealing five titanic machines. The first was a large red firetruck with the number one embedded on the hood. It had a large cherry picker on the back, and two water cannons near the base. Flame decals decorated the lower trim of the vehicle. The second was a large blue tank with two golden blasters on either side, just above the number two. The treads were rather long and slim. The third vehicle was a long yellow Formula One race car with long black front fenders. It had the number three on the back spoiler with sirens on top. The fourth vehicle was a green bulldozer with claw-like blades that had the number four in it, and three exhaust pipes on the each side. The fifth vehicle was a speed racing modified police car that looked about as long as the dragster. The number five was positioned on the hood of the vehicle. Rangers, hop into your respective colored zords, and take that thing down. Ariel ordered. Like you got to tell us twice. Sam said impressed. The five rangers jumped in and took control of their vehicles. Tell me you're getting this. One guy asked the cameraman. He nodded. Cool, Naruto said sitting in the driver's seat. An X-patterned seat belt crossed over his chest, strapping the ninja in. He grabbed the steering wheel, noticing the large red lever at his side. Naruto, Ricky said, appearing in a square on his HUD. Don't worry, I'm going to walk you through this. Thanks, Naruto said grateful. You guys teach Naruto all he needs to know, we got this. Sam said determined. He drove his tank forward and fired a few rounds at Shatter Shot. The military-themed monster blocked every shot. Stand aside rookie, Rebecca ordered, firing her own blasts. However, the monster deflected them again. Try my firepower rangers. Shatter Shot fired a few blasts out at the zords. I got this, Alan said. The bulldozer zord's blade split apart and extended, grabbing hold. Hey get off me, Shatter Shot ordered. Hold him still Alan, Carla ordered. She drove her Formula One racer forward as the fender lit up. She hit the brakes, and the Zord spun on its rear wheels, allowing for a slashing attack. Okay, no more Mr. Nice Guy, Shatter Shot declared. Do you know one? Naruto quipped. The water cannons fired a few ice blasts from the water cannons. The ice bullets made contact with Shatter Shot's midsection. This allowed Naruto to extend the cherry picker which fired a stream of flames. This isn't working, Naruto noticed. You guys didn't think your weapons were the only thing that combines, did you? Ricky asked sarcastically. Go on, Naruto said in interest. Insert those keys I gave you into the console and pull that lever at your side's back. Ariel ordered. You're going to love this. All right, the five said in unison. The rangers did as they were told, and the autopilot took over. Insert Go Go Power Rangers 2014 by Pelic. The cannons on Naruto's firetruck shifted down and around as it folded in half at the middle, giving it the appearance of a torso. The cherry picker shifted to where the left shoulder should be. The front of the girl's zords flipped around, revealing connector ports. The yellow zord attached to the right side while the white attached to the left. The fronts became shoulders as they folded down. The rear ends shifted back revealing black hands. The bulldozer zord split down the middle vertically as the back shifted up, taking on the appearance of lower legs. These two portions went on the ends of the tank zord's treads, as the claws shifted around, becoming shin guards. This configuration stood up, becoming the lower legs. The tank cannons folded up, and slipped into the ice cannons of the fire truck zord, becoming a full body. A head shifted out of the fire truck. It had a silver grill face mask with yellow colored eyes. It had a red sports car-like helmet with two wheels on either side of its head. On the front of the helmet was a signal light going from left to right red, yellow, green. Rangers, say hello to the raceway Megazord. Ariel said over the comms as the Megazord took a fighting pose. 
End song. Cool. The rangers said in the joint pit. Each ranger was in a go-kart light control pod each color to match their own. Naruto was in the center, the boys in front of him, while the girls were in back. Impressive design, Carla admitted. This is awesome, Alan said with a smile. Rumi, Naruto said. Epic design, Rebecca said. I like this job even more now, Sam said with a smirk. Now that is an easy target. Shattershot cackled, firing a few more rounds. The Megazord crossed its arms over itself, guarding. Raceway Buster Punch. The girls shouted in unison. The Megazord delivered a barrage of punches to Shattershot, pushing him back. Not good, Sylvian groaned. He and Technoclaw had relocated themselves to the top of a nearby building. What do you care? Technoclaw asked. Toxamore is the one who hired him. Good point, Sylvian admitted. Take this. Shattershot fired a few more rounds at the Megazord. This time it jumped over the attack. Activating grinder kick, Alan and Sam said in unison. The giant robot got into a flying kick stance as the bulldozer tread spun. The kick connected to the monster's midsection. Now to end this, Naruto said, flipping a switch. The ladder on the back extended right out as the hose flipped around becoming a sword handle. The ladder appeared in the Megazord's hand, revealing a long silver blade with the cherry picker being the hilt. Raceway Saber, full power. The five rangers said in unison. The Raceway Megazord swung the blade in front of itself in a circular pattern. As it did, the red signal light on its helmet lit up. Then yellow, then green. As the green light flared, the bulldozer tread spun at incredible speeds. A racetrack appeared before the Megazord, with shatter shot at the finish line. The blade glowed blue with power, as it slashed ending the monster. All right. That's how you do it, Power Rangers style. Naruto declared happily. Later on the Zords were sent back to the cyber garage, as Carla delivered the bad news of her unemployment. Because of which, they couldn't walk into the building and ask for the fragment. To make matters worse, according to Ariel's scans it actually was an amulet fragment. This just turned horrible, Rebecca said in annoyance. Hey, lay off her, Carla did her level best. Naruto insisted. Carla shot him a grateful smile. It was here, her phone went off. I got to go, it's this guy the first used to work with. She said, walking off. Guys, you're on TV. Ricky said in shock. The four other rangers ran off to see what was going on. A new breed of heroes now watches over us, calling themselves the Power Rangers Nitro Force. A female anchor of African descent said on the Channel 5 News. Clips of the rangers fighting the Oni Knights were seen on the screen. These multicolored protectors defended our city from a monstrous assortment of invaders. As forgive me for editorializing, this news anchor feels safer knowing the Power Rangers are here, this is Myra Santiago, Channel 5 News. We're famous, Sam cheered. The Power Rangers are famous, Ariel corrected. Despite her firm tone, Ariel couldn't hold back her smile. So why didn't the Wicked Witch of the News report this? Alan asked confused. Because she's been fired, Carla said, getting everyone's attention. Since she thought we were cosplayers, Angela didn't bother going out to see anything. Karma at its finest, Naruto said with a smirk. Yeah, that's the good news part, Carla said sheepishly. The bad news is she got so upset, she tossed the necklace into a moving garbage truck. You mean, we got to go dumpster diving? Naruto asked incredulous. Carla nodded in sorrow as her teammates dropped to the ground. Meanwhile back in the Leaf Village, the people were all abuzz about Naruto's arrest. A majority of the population was relieved. Apparently Donzo's false charges had actually scared people. They had already feared Naruto because of the nine-tailed fox inside him, and the temporary Hokage had only added fuel to the flames. However a few knew the truth, Naruto was innocent. As it turned out Mui, the warden had orchestrated the attack so he could power something called the Box of Ultimate Bliss. So the idea was simple, Naruto would go to jail, allowing the others to get everything ready. He's going to be mad at us, Sakura admitted, she and the rest of Team 7 were discussing their next move in the park. This has to happen Sakura, Kakashi said, his nose in his book. Besides, we'll treat him to ramen when he gets back. He's going to be heartbroken. Yamato reminded. Kakashi, Yamato, 
Everyone turned to see Ebisu run up. Naruto's gone, he never made it to Hazuka Castle. What? Kakashi asked confused, putting his book to the side. They say even trace of the guards taking him has vanished. Ebisu explained, out of breath. And to make matters stranger, Danzo is a great deal more upset about his than he should be. Why would that be? Kakashi asked confused. He turned his attention towards the academy, the last known location of the War Hawk. All right, one double cheeseburger, extra pickles, one tuna melt on rye, and one Caesar salad, no cheese. Naruto handed the customers their food. Thanks, cutie, one of the female patrons said with a wink. Naruto's face turned beet red at that. He turned to the back room, seeing the other rangers. You're a natural, Nate, Ricky said with a smirk, working the grill. To cover his origins, Naruto was given the alias Nathan, Nate, West. The West idea came from one of Sam's favorite comic book character, something about a super fast guy. It had been two days since the rangers destroyed Shattershot, and now Ariel was perfecting the scanner to find the amulet of eternal vision and all its fragments. Geez, do you think it could have something to do with women find me attractive? Naruto asked sarcastically. Lucky you, Carla spat bringing in a bucket of dirty dishes. She paused a moment, turning to Ricky. A bus girl, really? It was the only position open. He offered. Carla rolled her eyes, putting them in the dishwasher. I would rather help Ariel track down that fragment. Carla said under her breath. You know she and Alpha prefer to work alone. Sam reminded, assembling a burger. Hey Carla, your ex-boss is outside looking for you. Alan said, coming in with a ticket. Tell her I'm not here, Carla said, not looking up from her work. I did, she said it was a crock of crap and knows for a fact you're here. Alan said with a shrug. Carla sighed, all right, I'll hear her out. Just holler if she gets forceful, Ricky said, grabbing a bottle of hot sauce. Done, Carla said, walking out the door. When she got to the front of the restaurant, she was surprised to see Angela in such a mess. Her hair was lopsided and greasy, as opposed to her usual silky blonde. Her clothes were wrinkled beyond belief, and Angela's makeup was non-existent. I leave you alone for two days, and this is what happens. Carla asked rhetorically, trying her hardest not to enjoy this. Listen Carla, I need you. Angela said, firmly, okay, you actually used my real name, this should be good. Carla said firmly. I need your help in proving the Power Rangers are criminals. Carla just looked at her oddly. What nonsense are you spewing out now? Carla asked confused. Don't you find it odd these so-called heroes show up the same day the monster did? Angela asked rhetorically. They obviously set it up. Really? Well, Carla began, only to turn and shout, Oh my god, the Red Ranger just ran down the street with a bag of money on his back. Jackpot. Angela dashed out the door with a beat-up old camera in her hand. I'm not certain what I believe more, what you said, or the fact she believed it. Naruto admitted, observing the events. Meanwhile, up on the warship, a vacuum was presently being attached to Sylvian's face. G's place is filthy, the French-accented monster said, continuing her cleaning. This silver-skinned monster was neat freak. She stood rather tall although skinny in a dull gray and black maid's uniform. Her right arm was a large old-fashioned two-piece vacuum with the tank on the back. Her mouth was covered by a face mask and her green hair was hid behind a black bandana. This is the best you could think of. Technoclaw asked a Lucardic with his arms crossed. What? The vampire shrugged. We need that fragment, and she can get it quickly. She had better. Damacron ordered from his portal. Or it's burnt batwings for dinner tonight. A Lucardic gulped in fear of that. Neat freak. We, the monster asked snapping to attention. A dark energy sphere was summoned from the portal. Use this, in case of emergency only. Damacron threatened. We, neat freak bowed and left. Is she gone yet? Sylvian asked dazed. Back on in the leaf village, Danzo, Kaharu, and Homura were discussing their presently failed plan. This is impossible, not one person has found the boy. Kaharu asked confused. We have dozens of Anbu root at various checkpoints around the borders, he couldn't have gotten past them. Homura reminded. And we can't ask the toads to reverse summon him, they'll catch on to our plans too easily. Danzo reminded. 
Agreed. The others admitted. Meanwhile, Sakura was off delivering medicines to another tent was she was stopped by none other than Hanada. Oh, Hanada hi, Sakura said, surprised to see the girl. Listen, I'd love to stay a chat, but I'm. It's all your fault, Hanada said darkly. He's gone because of you. What are you? That is all Sakura could say as Hanada charged furiously. She swung her palms openly at Sakura, intending on lethal blows. However, Sakura was quicker and dodged everyone. Given Hanada's rage, it was evident she was off her game. Hanada stopped this, Sakura ordered. Hanada however didn't, as Sakura's command fell on deaf ears. Just die, you pink-haired bitch, Naruto was mine. Hanada hollered enraged. Sakura threw some smoke bombs down to get way. When the smoke cleared, Sakura was gone. Where are you? Hanada demanded, running off. Unaware, Sakura was hiding behind a tree nearby. Wow, she is really off her game. Sakura said with a sigh of relief. You're telling me, the stoic tone of Shino said, as the insect user appeared before her. Her sanity has been slipping in recent years. No doubt, and Naruto's disappearance has only increased it. Sakura sighed. Though the question is, where is he? Shino asked confused. The rangers had assembled in the cyber garage, where each was given a smartphone to match their ranger colors. Naruto, was obviously clueless to what they were. Each phone has a special set of apps that only works with your biometrics. Ariel explained. Among them are a prototype fragment scanner. Okay, so how does this thing work exactly? Naruto asked confused. We'll explain on the way. Sam said with a sigh. I'll drive. Alan said, pulling out some keys. A few minutes later, the five rangers were crammed into Alan's jeep. Carla had shotgun while the Sam and Rebecca tried to teach Naruto how to work his phone. This thing makes no sense. Naruto said, trying to figure out his phone. Guys, we're here, Carla said, looking up from the scanner. The others looked up to see they were at the city dump. Dumpster diving, advanced edition. Naruto groaned. Let's go, the sooner we get the fragment, the sooner we get back. Sam gripped, climbing the fence. The other rangers soon followed and began their search. I still don't see anything. Sam gripped. Geez, it's not like we haven't heard you complain three times in the past five minutes. Rebecca groaned. Wait, quiet, Naruto ordered. He motioned for the rangers to hide behind some debris. It was here Neat Freak began vacuuming up some trash. Zs is unacceptable, the monster shouted enraged. Zs, you mans, avenue no respect for Z working world. This might be easier than we thought, Rebecca said with a smirk. I don't think so, Naruto admitted. Uh, guys, Carla looked over her scanner app in fear. The marker representing the amulet fragment was moving in the same direction as Neat Freak was moving. Naruto, for the love of all that is holy, don't say I told you so. Sam ordered. Killjoy. The ninja groaned. Oh for Z love of clean. Neat Freak stomped her foot in rage. Full power. A massive vortex soon erupted from the vacuum, and began inhaling everything from cars to tissue boxes. Hang on to something. Naruto bellowed over the power of the suction. The wind eventually died down. Well that hurt, Alan groaned. Tell me about it, Rebecca said standing up. However it was here, the two rangers finally noticed something. Naruto, Sam, and Carla were gone. Oh don't tell me, Alan groaned. Vel, Vel, Neat Freak said, noticing the rangers. I've captured three rangers, along with an amulet fragment. She raised her vacuum arm. Now I must complete my collection. Well then. Let's step into something a little more suitable for play, shall we? Alan asked with a smile. I thought you'd never ask. Rebecca said with a smirk. Nitro Force, kick it up. The green and white rangers appeared in their respective colored flashes. Let's get dirty, Rebecca said, drawing her claw. Right behind you, Alan said, crossbow in hand. He fired a few rounds of his blaster mode weapon at the monster. She deflected every shot with her vacuum arm. Avenue your attacks back rangers. Neat Freak hit the reverse switch on the controls, sending the energy blasts back. The two rangers were sent flying after that attack. All right, let's see you take this. Rebecca threw her claw forward as it launched from the base. The claw grabbed Neat Freak's vacuum arm. 
Non, non ranger. Neat Freak pulled out a broom with a spear tip and swatted away the claw. She charged, spear in hand. Alan switched his crossbow into an axe and blocked the attack. I sure hope the others are doing okay. Naruto soon began to spit out the large amount of dust in his mouth. Gross. So this is the contents of a vacuum, huh? Carla asked confused, sitting on a massive dust pile. Sam however stared up at the hole they fell in. Well, how are we going to get out of this mess? He asked. We get out, after we find the fragment. Naruto reminded. Found it, Carla said, picking up the silver gem. And they found us, Sam said, pointing to the oncoming Oni Knights. Wow, when she cleans house, she doesn't know when to stop. Carla commented. Then let's get Morphin, Naruto declared. That your catchphrase now or something? Sam asked with a raised eyebrow. Yeah so, Naruto asked confused. Nothing, I like it. Sam admitted, it has a nice ring to it. Now then, Carla suggested, pointing to her wrist. Nitro force, kick it up. The red, yellow, and blue rangers appeared in a flash of light, ready to fight the monsters. Naruto lead the charge, as each ranger grabbed their excel blades. Sparks flew as all of the blades collided. This is actually going better than expected, Carla admitted, swinging her blade. I told you that training was coming in handy, Naruto said, pushing two Oni Knights to the ground. Guys, look, Sam pointed to a direction. The others looked ahead to see the vacuum filter. In it, was the amulet fragment. Convenient, Naruto shrugged. Carla kicked two of their enemies to the side. Naruto, go for it. He nodded. Naruto leapt over some trash and made his way to the filter. You sure that was a good idea? Sam asked, now holding both of his blasters. No, but he'll think of something. Carla shrugged, holding her katanas. Naruto made his way to the filter and noticed how fast the turbine was spinning, to the point where it would rip Naruto to pieces if he tried. He could just barely make out the amulet fragment at the base. Then he got an idea. Naruto pulled out his nitro weapon in blaster mode. Okay, two hands. He placed one hand underneath the barrel and another on the trigger. Here goes everything. Naruto fired a continuous stream of ice that began to cover the spinning apparatus. Oh, oh dear, Neat Freak said, feeling a strange chill run up her spine. What's your problem? Rebecca asked confused. It was here, the vacuum bag on her back burst open, releasing Naruto and the others. My vacuum, Neat Freak shouted in agony. I got it, Naruto said, holding up the fragment. The Oni Knights, then realized this. Oh, Naruto said flatly. You idiot, Carla said her hand against her helmet. The Oni Knights made a play for the jewel. Naruto panicked and tossed it into the air. I got it, Alan said, trying to grab the fragment. Non, using a broom, Neat Freak swatted the fragment midair away from the Green Ranger. Now fellas, let's discuss this reasonably, Sam said, holding up his hands to about 30 Oni Knights. Clearly, they didn't want to talk. Fine then, he grabbed his Excel blaster and fired it, knocking down a wall of debris on top of them. Done, the Blue Ranger said, dusting off his gloved hands. However it was here he noticed something. Dibs, Rebecca shot her claw out, grabbing the jewel fragment. The rope then began to retract itself to her. However three Oni Knights tackled the girl, causing the fragment to go skyward. No problem, Carla said. She pulled out a silver disc and twisted the top. It extended, becoming a jar, allowing the gem to fit in. Got to love the transit pods. She pressed a button on the side of the container, allowing it to be teleported back to the garage. We had one of those, Naruto asked confused. Ariel explained this to us before we left, remember? Carla said upset. Oh yeah, Rebecca realized. Guys, look at this couch. Sam said, excitedly. The other four rangers turned to see the blue one lifting up a brown slightly beat up couch. This thing is in great shape, and some idiot tried to throw it out. You ditched us, to get a couch? Naruto asked incuriously. What? No, Sam said defensively. He then pointed to the side. I shot a mountain of garbage, it collapsed on top of the Oni Knights, and the couch was on top. All right fine you can keep it, but I'm not helping move it. Naruto said firmly. Done, 
Sam said excitedly. You won't get the chance rangers. Neat Freak said, charging with spear in hand. Anyone, Naruto offered. Let's do it, Sam offered. The rangers handed over their blaster mode weapons, combining them. Grand Prix cannon, Naruto held the blaster up, with the four rangers behind him for support. Fire, a multicolored energy blast hit Neat Freak right in the stomach, ending her. All right, Naruto cheered, however it was here, his joy was replaced with shock as the energy sphere covered Neat Freak, supersizing her like it did shatter shot. Complete with fully repaired vacuum. I'll clean your clocks rangers. The titan boomed. Guys, we could really use the zords right about now. Carla panicked into her morpher. All right, they're on the way. Alpha said, pushing some buttons. The five zords raced down the street as the rangers jumped in. All right guys, let's go straight for the megazord. Naruto ordered. With pleasure. The other four agreed, inserting their keys. Insert Go Go Power Rangers 2014 by Pelic. The cannons on Naruto's fire truck shifted down and around as it folded in half at the middle, giving it the appearance of a torso. The cherry picker shifted to where the left shoulder should be. The front of the girl's zords flipped around, revealing connector ports. The yellow zord attached to the right side while the white attached to the left. The fronts became shoulders as they folded down. The rear ends shifted back revealing black hands. The bulldozer zord split down the middle vertically as the back shifted up, taking on the appearance of lower legs. These two portions went on the ends of the tank zord's treads, as the claws shifted around, becoming shin guards. This configuration stood up, becoming the lower legs. The tank cannons folded up, and slipped into the ice cannons of the fire truck zord, becoming a full body. A head shifted out of the fire truck. It had a silver grill face mask with yellow colored eyes. It had a red sports car like helmet with two wheels on either side of its head. On the front of the helmet was a signal light going from left to right red, yellow, green. Raceway Megazord. The five declared as the Megazord took a fighting pose. End song. No matter. One target is just as good. Neat Freak said with a smug tone. All right, let's cut to the chase. Naruto said, as the Megazord drew its sword. I'll take that. Neat Freak raised her vacuum arm, allowing the suction to go full force. The raceway saber was sucked in, disarming the Megazord. No fair, Rebecca said, standing up in her seat. Rangers, there is another way to stop her. Alpha said over the comms. The raceway Megazord has a second finishing attack called the Burnout Beam, with it you can fire a concentrated energy blast. Just what we need. Carla said, what's the catch? We need about five minutes for it to charge properly. Ricky answered. Of course, Rebecca said flatly. Die Rangers, Neat Freak declared, brandishing her spear-tipped broom. The Megazord blocked the attack with its arm. The Metal Titan pushed Neat Freak back, delivering another punch. Perfect, Angela said, with a wicked smirk and her camera in hand. A little editing, and the Power Rangers are prison-bound. Rangers, it's ready, Ariel said over the comms link. Burnout beam, full power. The five rangers shouted in unison. The Megazord's chest lit up with power as it crossed its arms over it. As the light reached its zenith, the Megazord uncrossed its arms, releasing the energy blast. Not so fast rangers, Neat Freak raised her vacuum arm, allowing her to suck up the energy blast. Keep firing, Naruto ordered. What? Rebecca asked confused. Done, that'll work, Carla said, raising the power. What is he up to? Ricky asked confused. Of course, the burnout beam will destroy the contents of the bag in a fraction of the time Naruto's ice blasts could. Alpha explained, revealing the data in front of him. The bag on Neat Freak's back began to expand ferociously. Sakura blew. The bag exploded, as the raceway saber flew into the sky. The Megazord jumped after it, and over Neat Freak in the dust storm she made. Oh no, Angela said, as a massive wad of dust bunnies landed on her. The collision also destroyed her camera. The former Ankar woman then tried to crawl out of the dust pile, only to trip and fall on her face. I just had this dry cleaned. She whined. The raceway Megazord triumphantly grabbed its sword and landed. All right, that's how you do it, Power Ranger style. Naruto shouted triumphantly, as Neat Freak fell over dead. The rangers returned, clean thankfully. 
However Sam looked down at Sorrow. It was so innocent. Dude, it was a couch, let it go. Alan said, tired of hearing him complain. How do you think I feel, I live with him now? Naruto groaned. Where would you put it? Ricky asked with a raised eyebrow. Rangers, you did a bang up job today getting the first fragment. Alpha said with a happy tone, locking up the first fragment. But your job's not over yet. Far from it, there are what, 12 more gems to get. Rebecca shrugged. And according to our most recent scans, another is here in Meteor Falls. Ariel said, checking her tablet. So, let's get to work. Naruto said cracking his knuckles. I like the way you think red. Ricky said with a smile. The other rangers couldn't help but agree. Ariel smiled, this was going to work. The sun was setting on another day in Meteor Falls. Just about ready, Carla said, tying the last part of the banner to the front of the pit stop sign. She climbed down the ladder, and smiled at her work. The sign was advertising the Meteor Falls street fair tomorrow. I love this time of the year. I'll bet, Naruto said, wiping down the windows. Shame Sam is still sulking about the couch. So we accidentally stepped on it with the Megazord, we still saved the city from a massive monster. Carla reminded. He still doesn't care, Naruto said with a smile. Well, see you tomorrow Nate, Carla said with a smile, handing the boy the ladder. See you, we'll need all hands on deck, Naruto said with a smirk. Carla got on her scooter and jetted down the street. Eventually, she reached her apartment, parking her ride. Getting off, Carla smiled seeing her shy neighbor Alice walking down the street. Hey kiddo, Carla said with a smile. Alice smiled back, she was only eight years old, and one of the sweetest kids you'd ever meet, especially to animals. The girl happily skipped into her home. Sweet kid, Carla said with a smile, going into her home. Meanwhile back on the warship, Sylvian was being given an energy sphere. You'd better not fail me Sylvian, the rangers already have the first fragment. Damacron threatened. Rest assured master, this plan can't fail. Sylvian said with a smirk. I've heard that before. Demorkin scoffed, ending the transmission. So where's this guy you called in? Toxamora asked with arms crossed. Already on earth, getting ready. Sylvian said with a smile. And how will he get us the next fragment? Technoclaw asked confused. Simply put, instead of going to it, he'll make it so the fragment comes to him. Sylvian explained cryptically. And how about dealing with the rangers? Technoclaw countered. Simply put, they wouldn't get in his way. Sylvan cackled. The next day found Naruto walking down the street towards the hardware store a few hours before the fair started. Ricky asked him to get some light bulbs he needed for the kitchen, only to find a crime scene awaiting him. The windows to the store had been destroyed, being that a few riding mowers had been rammed through them. Chemicals of all kinds had been dumped all over the place, and a buzzsaw was still running around wildly. Wow, looks like my place after my sixth birthday. Naruto admitted disturbed. Oh you think that's bad? The store owner said, walking up to the boy. It was my son and five of his friends who did all this. The owner said looked down in sorrow. And he's ten. Wow, Naruto admitted disturbed. Why, I don't know, Phil never acted like this before. The owner admitted, just as surprised. Naruto was about to say something, when he noticed someone walk by. It was a clown. The man was dressed in a blue tuxedo with polka dots of all varieties all over it. He wore stereotypical big red shoes and nose, and to top it off a rainbow afro. Now ordinarily, Naruto wouldn't have thought much past it, but his pockets seemed to be filled with jewelry. Okay, where are you going? Naruto asked confused. Trusting his ninja training, Naruto decided to follow the man, only for the clown to disappear into an alleyway. When Naruto turned down the alley, the clown was gone. That's not good, Naruto said deciding to head back to the cyber garage. Carla was headed out the door with a few stray supplies under her arm for the festivities. Bye mom, see you tonight. Unaware that Alice ran out the door with something jangling in her hands. Carla looked up in confusion. The girl's pigtails were non-existent, and it looked like jam was covering her face. What in the sweet name of decency? Carla asked confused. She ran over to the balcony, 
To see in the span of 30 seconds Alice had hopped into her parents' sub and started it up. Alice no. Carla turned to see Alice's father run up. Before they knew it, Alice was driving off at full speeds. What happened to her? Carla asked incredulous. I don't know. I tucked her into bed last night and she was fine. This morning she woke up and this weird bracelet was on her wrist. The man admitted, giving Carla enough time to look over the man. He was covered in glitter and finger paint. I asked her about it, and the sparks flew, stealing her mother's jewelry box. All this over a bracelet? Carla asked confused. Alice's father shrugged. It was time for Carla to go to work. And she didn't mean the cafe. Kids acting up. Ariel asked confused. That's the emergency. She looked up from her work on the computer. You didn't see the hardware store. Naruto countered. Seriously, Alice is shy and sweet, never a thug. Carla countered. What's going on? Ricky asked confused, entering the cyber garage through the elevator. The first wave will be here any minute. Remember what I told you what happened at the hardware store? Naruto asked, while Ricky nodded. Carla comes in, saying her neighbor did the same thing. And then Naruto says some clown had a ton of jewelry in his pockets, who disappears in an alley. Carla explained. Okay, so you think the Power Rangers need to investigate? Ricky asked trying to understand. Yes, Naruto and Carla said in unison. Which they shouldn't, Ariel brought up. No they shouldn't, Ricky agreed. Thank you, Ariel said grateful. As the Rangers, do it as civilians. Ricky said, this sounds all kind of wrong, yes. Ricky then put some supplies he was carrying in his hands to Naruto and Carla. But the Power Rangers snooping around will raise red flags to everybody. Thank you, the Rangers said in unison. You can buy getting those decorations up, now. Ricky pointed out. You rock sergeant, Naruto said with a smirk. And don't you forget it, Ricky said as the two headed out. You just completely contradicted me, Ariel said enraged. You completely denied something weird's going on. Ricky shot back. And you two fight like a married couple. Alpha chuckled. This instantly stopped the fight. I got to agree with my brother, it sounds really weird. Alan admitted. He and the other rangers were putting some last minute decorations together, discussing what had happened. Sam, Alan, and Rebecca instantly started agreeing with the other two rangers. Carla was about to add something when she saw Alice walking by with a massive amount of jewelry. I'll be right back, she dashed outside, unaware Rebecca was right behind her. Alice, hold on, Carla shouted in concern. The girl didn't stop, instead she got faster. Alice, Carla shouted, speeding up herself. However the girl made a dash into a side street, with the ranger girls right behind her. Girl knows how to run, Rebecca said impressed. Why are you here? Carla asked picking up speed. Same as you, Rebecca said with a smirk. Good answer, Carla said as the girls went faster. The duo eventually stopped to see the clown Naruto had seen earlier was sitting on a chair as the kids piled their parents' jewelry off to a large pile in front of a large circus tent. What surprised the girls the most was the fact Oni Knights were swarming the area, hauling the gems. One of these stupid things has to be a fragment, the clown said agitated. I'll make the call. Rebecca said with determination. Carla nodded. Only it was at this time, the kids jumped on the two. Alice, stop this, Carla ordered, noticing her friend. The girl remained silent, giving Carla enough time to see the strange bracelet. It was made of multiple colored scarfs and what looked like juggling pin were connecting each one. Sorry kiddo, Carla pushed one pin away. At this, Alice's bracelet fell apart. Well, well, Two Power Rangers at my circus before the show starts. The clown said sarcastically, How rude. How do you know that? Rebecca demanded confused. Allow me to properly introduce myself. The man smirked, and then spun on his heel. In place of the man was a monstrous and rather portly clown. He wore a red, blue, and green one-piece clown jumpsuit with white and black stripped frills around his neck, ankles, and wrists. Three large yellow buttons went down his chest. His hair was dark red and almost looked like devil horns while he had a large open red lip mouth, exposing his sharp teeth. His hat was pointed and looked like a large circus tent. He had pure black eyes with two triangles on the top and bottom of each. 
He had larger clown shoes on with skulls on the toes. I'm big top the clown. I always hated clowns. Rebecca said with a groan. What the hell are you doing? Carla demanded. Simple. Big Top cackled. One of these gems is a fragment to the Amulet of Eternal Vision, and once I find it, I'll be given a huge payoff from Master Damacron. Wow could you be any more pathetic? Rebecca asked sarcastically. Pathetic isn't the word I'd use. Carla admitted. More on the lines of disturbing. Get them in the cages. Big Top ordered. The children nodded. However no one noticed Alice slip away. Where are they? Ricky asked confused. Carla got worried about a friend, and Rebecca followed her. Sam explained. She said she'd be back soon. That friend? Alan asked, as Alice ran into the door panicking. Help. Alice begged. Naruto ran over in concern. He knelt down to her eye level. What happened? A monster clown has Carla, and he made me do stuff I didn't want to. Alice insisted handing Naruto the bracelet. It was the clown that gave that to me yesterday, and then I did stuff. Calm down kiddo, Naruto said, holding up his hand. We happen to know some people who can get in contact with the Power Rangers, and they just might be able to help. Naruto grabbed the bracelet and nodded to Riki who nodded in return. He picked up Alice and took her to the back to call her parents. Down in the cyber garage, Ariel and Alpha was looking over the bracelet via the scanner. I don't want to hear an, I told you so, Naruto. Ariel said rudely. This thing is giving off one weird frequency. Alpha explained, looking over the specs. So how do we stop it? Alan asked concerned. Easy, you remember how I said there are several apps only you rangers can use on your smartphones. Ariel asked. Among them is a sonic frequency jammer which can do the job, but I'll need a few minutes to isolate the frequency. Perfect. Naruto said with a smile. You have no idea what she even said to you. Alpha asked rhetorically. No, but it sounds cool. Naruto admitted with a shrug. Long story short, Alan began, seeing more than enough sci-fi stuff in his life. Our phones will release a sonic wave that can undo the mind control. I knew it was perfect. Naruto said with a smirk. Now let's get Morphin. I love it when you say that. Sam smirked himself. Nitro Force, kick it up. In a flash of light, the three male rangers appeared. Let's do this, Naruto said, as they ran out the door. Good kids, Alpha said with a happy tone. Naruto and the boys were watching the hypnotized kids hauling the girls in a large circus cage. Their morphers were presently being juggled by Big Top along with two juggling balls. Keep going brats, once two more bracelets are made, we'll have a few new performers to deal with. Joy, this is going to be tough. Naruto groaned. A lot more than you might think, Alan said, pointing to the side, revealing the second amulet fragment. Aw oh man, Sam groaned. What's the play red? I'll free the girls, you two get that fragment. Naruto ordered. The green and blue rangers nodded in agreement. Carla sat in the cage, trying to think, when a series of clanks got her attention. She and Rebecca turned to see Naruto holding both the white and yellow morphers. You can't keep much out of a former ninja's reach, he said, opening the cage. Took you long enough, Rebecca said rudely, taking her morpher. Alice is back at the pit stop, safe, Naruto told Carla. Much obliged, she said, adjusting her morpher. Nitro force kick it up. Huh, Big Top asked confused. He turned to see the yellow ranger, charging at him with Excel blade in hand. Payback time bozo, she slashed the blade, only for Big Top to pull out a large juggling pin, blocking the attack. Nice try ranger, but I do the tricks around here. Big Top cackled. Well here's one from us, Alan said victoriously, holding up his phone. A sonic blast emerged from his phone, destroying the bracelets. The kids zoned out for a moment, only to run away from the monster. Get going you munchkins, Sam called out with the canister under his arm. He propped it up, and pressed the button, sending it back to the garage. No, Big Top shouted, pushing Carla back. Rangers, get him, Naruto ordered, as everyone drew their Excel blades. It's time for my juggling routine. Big Top smirked, pulling out multiple juggling pins. He tossed them hard and fast at the rangers, who were nailed hard. As the pins hit, 
they bounced off the rangers, landing in Big Top's hands, who repeated this process. Oh that hurts, Naruto groaned, as he was sent back. Now for my big finale. Big Top tossed several more pins. Naruto, your freeze rifle. Carla shouted. Naruto knew what she meant. He pulled out his blaster mode weapon, and shot out a stream of ice, freezing the pins, causing them to fall to the ground. You think my juggling routine was tough, Big Top cackled. Check out my lion tamer routine. He pulled out a large flaming whip. He swung it, releasing a series of fire wave. Naruto shot a few more ice bullet rounds, only he missed three waves. Stand still please, Rebecca said. She and Sam then jumped off his shoulders, and fired a few rounds of their Excel blasters. Big Top was hit, causing him to fly back a ways. Cheap shot, you're not pulling the hook on me. Want to bet, Naruto asked, pulling out his Excel blade and charging along with Alan. The two swung their swords, only for Big Top to pull out some roped handkerchiefs and lasso the two. Don't worry rangers, I've got plenty of tricks up my sleeves, and a circus crew to back me up, Onik Knights. A swarm of goons soon followed and aimed for the wrapped up rangers. Hold on, Naruto bent, allowing Alan to kick three away. The green ranger shifted his weight, allowing Naruto to kick some himself. Hang on boys, Carla said, holding her nitro weapon in melee mode. The two swords slashed the bindings, freeing the male rangers. Thanks, Naruto said grateful. The others showed up and everyone else summoned their nitro weapons in melee mode too. I think you earned this. The rangers brought their weapons together in the form of the Grand Prix Saber, handing it over to Carla. Thank you kindly, she said as the other four stood behind her. With one mighty swing, Big Top and the Oni Knights were destroyed. Damn circus act, Sylvian groaned. No matter, the show must go on. He tossed the energy sphere at Big Top's remains, supersizing him. Ha ha ha, the titanic clown cackled. Now I'm really Big Top. Guys, we need the Zords. Carla said into her morpher. Already pressing buttons, Alpha said, pulling the main switch. Out of the portal, the five vehicles were summoned, and the rangers hoped in. All right team, it's Megazord time. Carla said firmly. Girl took the words right out of my mouth. Naruto chuckled, as all five rangers inserted their keys. Insert Go Go Power Rangers 2014 by Pelic. The cannons on Naruto's fire truck shifted down and around as it folded in half at the middle, giving it the appearance of a torso. The cherry picker shifted to where the left shoulder should be. The front of the girl's zords flipped around, revealing connector ports. The yellow zord attached to the right side while the white attached to the left. The fronts became shoulders as they folded down. The rear ends shifted back revealing black hands. The bulldozer zord split down the middle vertically as the back shifted up, taking on the appearance of lower legs. These two portions went on the ends of the tank zord's treads, as the claws shifted around, becoming shin guards. This configuration stood up, becoming the lower legs. The tank cannons folded up, and slipped into the ice cannons of the fire truck zord, becoming a full body. A head shifted out of the fire truck. It had a silver grill face mask with yellow colored eyes. It had a red sports car like helmet with two wheels on either side of its head. On the front of the helmet was a signal light going from left to right red, yellow, green. Raceway Megazord. The five declared as the Megazord took a fighting pose. End song. Don't think you can steal my spotlight, Rangers. Big Top cackled, pulling out two juggling pins. The clown tossed them at the giant robot. Not today, Alan said, pushing his controls, as he did, the Megazord leapt into the air, over the attack and nailed the monster with a powerful kick. Pull the lever Naruto, Carla ordered, with a fake old lady accent. Done, Naruto said, flipping the switch. The Megazord pulled the raceway saber out of its sheath and in its right hand. I'll take that, Big Top threw a handkerchief line at the sword, grabbing it. The clown then tried to pull the sword out of the Megazord's hand. Hold it steady, Carla ordered. Okay, why? Rebecca asked confused. However, the Yellow Ranger was strangely silent. Uh, where did she go? Alan asked confused. Everyone turned to see the yellow control pod empty. Scorching speed or knuckle, Carla shouted from the pit of her Zord. The Yellow Zord launched itself from the Megazord, 
and slammed right into Big Top's nose, causing it to squeak, and him to fall back. The Formula One racer then raced back and reattached itself. Now let's end this, Carla said, reappearing in the Megazord. This whole thing has you riled up, doesn't it? Naruto asked concerned. This freak messed with my friend, of course I am. Carla said firmly. Good answer. Now Raceway Saber, full power. The Raceway Megazord swung the sword around its body in a circular motion as the energy track appeared, with Big Top at the finish line. No wait, Big Top begged, as the lights on the Megazord's helmet lit up red, yellow, then green. Bye bye Carla shouted infuriated. The Megazord drove down the racetrack, and slashed, destroying Big Top. I was just clawing around. Were Big Top the clown's final words? Now that's how you do it. Naruto began, Power Ranger style, the other four finished. Later that day, the Rangers had just finished returning the stolen jewelry with the help of the local police department. Presently, the five heroes were on break, and Rebecca had actually talked Dr. Ariel into joining them. Once the locals saw the giant clown monster, needless to say, everyone understood. How did you kids talk me into this? Ariel demanded, holding a stick of cotton candy. Because, I found something to make all of you happy, Naruto said holding up some prizes he won. He walked the others over to the dunk tank, revealing Angela in the tank, clearly wet. She is that strapped for cash. Oh this just made my day. Carla smiled. It was here Alice tossed the ball at the target, dunking Angela. The rangers then turned to the yellow ranger who only smiled more. Come on, we got prizes to win. Sam said with a smile. As the rangers walked off, Naruto stopped a moment, feeling minor discomfort in his stomach. I knew I shouldn't have had that corn dog thing. Naruto groaned, unaware the seal on his stomach flickered. Meanwhile, in the stormy waters of the grass village, on top a large stone island, stood Hizuka Castle, a menacing building that housed the worst criminals in the shinobi nations. The warden, Mui, was one of the most ruthless people to ever live. Especially since he framed Naruto Uzumaki, the nine-tailed demon host. Of course he knew, the loud-mouthed idiot couldn't do anything right, and with his demon chakra, Mui could open the box of ultimate bliss. Unfortunately, the boy pulled one hell of a disappearing act, one he knew no Jonin could accomplice, let alone a Jenin. No, I will get the boy, one way or another. Mui growled venomously. Needless to say with two pieces of the amulet in possession of the rangers, Lord Damacron was infuriated. You morons, how could you have lost two fragments? Damacron demanded tossing out a variety of lightning attacks at his four minions. Apologies master, but we can still turn this around, Technoclaw said, hiding behind a pillar. I've called in a specialist to help. A demolition specialist, a robot said walking in. He was a bright yellow machine that wore armor similar to that of a construction crane. His right arm was a large shovel claw and left was a large hook, on his head was a yellow hard hat. I'm heavy duty. Heavy duty, Alucardic scoffed, he's evidently heavy. Oh yeah bad boy, hit me. Heavy duty challenged. Why? The general questioned. Do it, the machine ordered. Deciding to humor the fool, Alucardic drew a sword and swung it. He recoiled greatly, seeing the blade cracked, instead of heavy duty. Sometimes a good offense, is a perfect defense. Technoclaw explained. Despite the dark aura, Lord Damacron showed signs of delight. Heavy Duty will plow his way through all of Meteor Falls, until he finds the Rangers' base and takes their fragments. Am I right to assume killing the Rangers is among your plan? Damacron asked curiously. Heavy Duty nodded. Grand, now here's an energy sphere, in case things go wrong. Damacron gave Technoclaw a sphere as the two machines walked out. Unaware, the sphere shrunk a bit in Technoclaw's normal hand. Down on Earth, Naruto and the other rangers were having a friendly sparing session in the training room using bamboo swords. Come on ninja boy, is that all you got? Sam taunted. More than you, Naruto taunted, sweeping the blue ranger's feet, knocking him on his back. Naruto then pointed his sword at Sam's face. You win again whiskers, Rebecca said with a chuckle. I am just that good. Naruto shrugged with a smile. Yeah you are, Sam said and then noticed the sad look on Alan's face. Something wrong, Sam asked concerned. Nah, it's nothing, 
The Green Ranger insisted. However it was here the entire complex shook violently. This isn't natural, Naruto shouted horrified. As the shaking stopped, Alan turned to Naruto. How would you know? He asked confused. I've seen jutsu that have made earthquakes before, I can tell. Naruto admitted. And you're right on the money, Carla said, looking over some equipment. No major fault lines were affected, in fact it looks like the quake's epicenter is near downtown. Then what are you waiting for? Get out there, Ricky said with a smile. The five rangers nodded, with one reluctant, as they rushed out the door. You noticed something off about your brother? Alpha asked concerned, when the rangers were out of earshot. Yeah I did, I've never seen him like this, Ricky admitted. The five fully morphed rangers found themselves meeting heavy duty slamming his claws into the concrete. With each swing, a small tremor shook the ground. Oi, hard hat, Sam shouted. We're going to need to see your permit for that. Ah, well if it isn't the power pukers. The monster sneered. Looks like I've got some demolition work to do. And now is when you call in the Oni Knights, right? Rebecca asked, as the rangers drew their swords. Not going to need them. Heavy Duty cackled victoriously. You'll fall at the hands of Heavy Duty. Heavy Duty swung his shovel claw at the ground, creating a powerful shockwave of dirt at them. Scatter, Naruto ordered as the rangers rolled to the side. Here we go, Rebecca and Carla jumped at heavy duty, and swung their blades. However much to their surprise, the attacks didn't do anything. Blasters fire, Naruto ordered, as the boys fired their excel blasters with the same results. Cute, now it's my turn, heavy duty cackled, he raised his arms and clasped them together, creating a sonic blast. The attack sent the team flying far and fast. Okay, Try nitro weapons, Naruto ordered, as the rangers called out their weapons. Naruto fired a few rounds of his ice rifle, with much better aim than usual. However heavy duty swung his arms, deflecting the attacks. Try my claws on for size, Rebecca taunted, swinging hers at the machine, only for him the two to interlock, holding them together. Alan then ran forward, and attempted to swing his axe, which had the same results. Hold him still. Carla and Sam then ran forward, shooting heavy duty with a barrage of energy blasts. However much to the rangers' collective surprise, the attacks did little to nothing against the heavy industrial machine. Get off me, heavy duty declared, tossing the rangers off him. He slammed his claw into the ground, causing the concrete beneath the six to open up and swallow everyone up. Ow, Alan groaned, finding himself demorphed and on the ground. The Green Ranger soon found out he was in the sewers, several miles underground. Guys, can you hear me? He said into his morpher, only to get static. The sewer must be blocking communications. Alan, is that you? Naruto called out. Alan turned around to see a bright flash of light. In Naruto's hand was a flashlight, and to his surprise, Alice at his side. That monster's attack took a lot of nearby people. Where'd the flashlight come from? Alan asked confused. A maintenance worker, one of Heavy's attacks collapsed a tunnel, and her leg got caught. Naruto explained. Let's move it then, Alan said with a sigh. Hey Alice, why don't you go see if that nice lady needs help, I want to talk with Alan for a bit, okay? Naruto suggested. Okay Nate, Alice said, running ahead. It was here, Naruto turned to Alan and adopted a serious expression. What's wrong with you? I, I've just been feeling useless lately, the Green Ranger admitted with a sigh. Compared to the rest of you. The rest of us, Naruto asked confused. You are an awesome leader, Sam's great with his blaster, Carla's smart, and Rebecca kicks butt hard. Alan began. Plus, you're a wanted criminal for several crimes you didn't commit in your hometown, and yet you still managed to pull through. Alan then looked down in sorrow. What do I bring to the table, nothing. Dude, that's not even remotely true, you're strong. Naruto insisted. Yeah, sure, Alan said with a shrug. Before Naruto could try to cheer his friend up, a minor quake happened. The two rounded the corner to see Heavy Duty slamming his claws into the wall. I have to find those two fragments. He's trying to get to the garage. Naruto whispered. As if we didn't have enough problems. Alan whispered sarcastically. Hope this distraction keeps the rangers off our hides for a while. Heavy duty mumbled, 
getting the boy's collective attention. Okay, ow, Carla said, trying to move through the sewers, as she had apparently broken her ankle in the fall. I can't get the others on the comm link, Sam said, trying to get a signal. If it isn't one problem it's another. Rebecca groaned. It has to be here. To everyone's surprise, it was Technoclaw in an adjacent tunnel. The three separated rangers looked over to see Technoclaw looking through an assortment of crates from a fallen delivery truck. The delivery driver was now unconscious inside the vehicle. What's he salvaging? Carla asked confused, pulling out her phone, activating the telescope app. The camera then zoomed in onto the robot's work. That's some seriously old military-grade hard drives he's digging through, Carla pointed out concerned. It must be on its way for salvaging. What's he after? Rebecca asked confused. I couldn't tell you, not from here. Carla admitted. Found it, I'm gone. Technoclaw inserted a USB drive into one of them and left in a flash of light. What was he after? Sam asked confused, going to help the drive out of the vehicle, while Carla went over to the drives. Nothing I could tell you, Technoclaw installed a virus to erase the whole hard drive. Carla explained confused. We better find Naruto and Alan, Rebecca said, helping the driver out. It was here, said two rangers ran up to them. Guys, we have a problem, Naruto shouted. We kind of know already, Technoclaw was just here. Carla explained, he was after something in these drives. And we think heavy duty is just a distraction for this. Alan explained confused. A few people got caught, but they're safe now. Naruto explained. Let's get him out of here and stop heavy duty before he causes too much damage, or finds our base. Sam said firmly. How? He's immune to all our weapons. Alan pointed out, as they walked the driver to the nearest ladder. Naruto's freeze rifle, when you rapidly change the temperature of metals, you can destroy them. Carla explained. We'll have to heat it with our Excel blasters first. It was here, a tremor went off from Heavy Duty's work, separating Alan from the others. A massive chunk of the wall fell into the cave. Guys, are you okay? Alan asked concerned. Yeah, we'll meet up with you in a bit. Naruto called out. In the meantime, we'll get Morphin. All right. Alan called out weakly. The Green Ranger could faintly make out the flash of light, indicating the other four had morphed. Some ranger I am, Alan said as he slowly walked down the tunnel. Then he thought back to Naruto, the boy was a wanted criminal, hated for reasons beyond anyone's control, and yet he still managed to keep looking on the bright side of things. If Naruto can, why can't I? Alan thought to himself. He then flashed back to Carla, when she originally said she didn't want to be a ranger. Yet she still took on the role of the yellow ranger. Sam was worried he might never see his brother again, and Rebecca. Well, it would probably be better if he didn't go there. I can't keep getting down, I have to be strong, in more ways than one. Alan said determined, the others need me. Wise words Green Ranger, a feminine voice said. Alan turned around to see no one present. Your bravery and perseverance has earned you a new weapon. Demetria, Alan asked confused as an orange flash of light appeared before him. Heavy duty was eventually found by the rangers near a sewer drain. Time for some overtime. Bring it on, Naruto challenged, his rifle in hand. He fired a steady ice stream at heavy duty. However the construction-themed villain fired a steady cloud of black smoke from his mouth. The two attacks met in the middle and collided. However Naruto's blast was quickly sent back, pushing the rangers away. You didn't think I'd become unprepared, did you rangers? Heavy duty challenged. Hang on guys, Alan declared, fully morphed and arriving. I got this. You got me, how? Heavy duty cackled. With a little help from Demetria, the Green Ranger said firmly. Armor weapon on, an orange flash of light appeared in Alan's hands. A long orange staff with a black tread like grip in the middle now took its place. On one end was a segmented drill bit, the other was a jackhammer head. Geo Lancer, ready. Cute, what's that supposed to do? The construction mech taunted. This, Alan swung the weapon and dragged the drill across the monster's chest, greatly damaging him. Ow, heavy duty bellowed in pain. How, Alan spun the weapon and thrusted the jackhammer tip into the monster, pushing him out the grate and into an unused quarry. I want one, Naruto said impressed. 
Let's get in there, Rebecca said with a smile. The five rangers leapt down, ready to fight. Onik knights, heavy duty called out infuriated. A swarm of the demons took to the rocky area as the rangers all took a fighting stance. Let's save the day, Alan said with a smile. With pleasure, the other four rangers said in unison. From on top of the hill, Angela was taking several snapshots with her camera. A little digital editing, and the rangers are criminals, putting me back on top. She cackled victorious. Rangers go to work, Naruto declared as they all pulled out their excel blades, with Naruto switching his rifle back to a sword. The five charged with their weapons in hand, with Alan taking the charge. Seismic wave, he slammed the jackhammer tip into the ground, sending a shockwave after the Oni Knights. The resulting attack sent the airborne. Demetria came through for us today, Naruto said, impressed with the weapon. I'm willing to bet we haven't seen anything yet. Sam smirked, kicking one Onanite into another. Sam blocked a third's attempt to strike him with his Excel blade. Ladies, Naruto offered, as he and Sam locked their arms together. The girls jumped on, and used the momentum to get higher up. Using their Excel blades, the two struck the Oni Knights down. Nice, Rebecca said, holding up her hand for a high five, which Carla accepted. Try this, Heavy Duty declared, throwing another burst of smoke their way. Scatter, Naruto ordered as he, Sam, Carla, and Rebecca did as they were told, while Alan thrusted the Geo Lancer's drill into the cloud, dispersing it. What? Heavy Duty demanded. Fire, Naruto ordered, shooting his ice blasts, with the others firing Excel blasters. The resulting blast cracked the armor even further. I have some serious anger management to deal with him, Rebecca said, pulling out her scatter blaster and firing it. As the attacks hit, Sam rushed heavy duty with his knuckle dusters on. Carla rushed over and fired an energy arrow right in a crack, increasing the damage done. Much obliged yellow, Sam said as Naruto and Alan kicked heavy duty away with a dual high kick. Rangers, bring them all together. Naruto ordered, the rangers reformed the Grand Prix cannon, except Alan twisted the drill end a bit, allowing the Geo Lancer to fit over the barrel of Naruto's rifle. The jackhammer bit extended becoming an extended stock. The drill then expanded in a triangle shape. Grand Prix cannon, drill custom. Naruto gladly handed over the weapon to Alan. The four rangers supported the green ranger. Fire, Alan pulled the trigger allowing a spiral blast of energy to destroy the mechanical monster. Time for some retooling, Technoclaw declared from on top of the quarry, tossing down the energy sphere and reviving a much larger heavy duty. I'll flatten you rangers, the titan boomed. Guys, we need the zords, Alan said into his morpher. Uh, sure, Ariel said, activating the zord bay, while running a scan on heavy duty. All right guys, it's time for the megazord. Naruto said inserting his key into the console. Right behind you, Alan said, doing the same. Insert Go Go Power Rangers 2014 by Pelic. The cannons on Naruto's fire truck shifted down and around as it folded in half at the middle, giving it the appearance of a torso. The cherry picker shifted to where the left shoulder should be. The front of the girl's zords flipped around, revealing connector ports. The yellow zord attached to the right side while the white attached to the left. The fronts became shoulders as they folded down. The rear ends shifted back revealing black hands. The bulldozer zord split down the middle vertically as the back shifted up, taking on the appearance of lower legs. These two portions went on the ends of the tank zord's treads, as the claws shifted around, becoming shin guards. This configuration stood up, becoming the lower legs. The tank cannons folded up, and slipped into the ice cannons of the fire truck zord, becoming a full body. A head shifted out of the fire truck. It had a silver grill face mask with yellow colored eyes. It had a red sports car like helmet with two wheels on either side of its head. On the front of the helmet was a signal light going from left to right red, yellow, green. Raceway Megazord, the five rangers said in unison, while the mech took a fighting stance. End song, I'll make quick work of you five. Heavy duty challenged. Bring it on, Rebecca said with a smirk. Rangers, to their surprise, a hologram of Demetria appeared before them in the Megazord's window. I am pleased with your progress as both a team, and Ranger, the woman began. With Alan's growth comes a new power, 
may I introduce the Geo Armor Zord? An orange key appeared in Alan's hand as a large Zord took to the streets. It was a large orange construction vehicle. It had a large roller drum on its front. The most noticeable and menacing features were the pair of drills on either side of the main console. Give it a go green, Naruto said with a smile. You've earned it. Thank you. Alan leapt out of his seat and into the new pit. All right, let's kick it up. He grabbed the controls, and the armor zord rolled down the street. Finally, Angela said, running down the street with camera in hand, recording more incriminating evidence. However as she did, Angela tripped and the camera flew into the street, right into the armor zord's way. Why does this keep happening to me? She cried hysterically. The drills spun, allowing the massive energy blast to hit heavy duty repetitively. Stop it, stop it. That thing is awesome, Naruto said excitedly, and it will become even more impressive, Demetria began. As with the armor weapon, the Geo Armor Zord can combine with the Raceway Megazord for additional power. She faded away with a nod. I trust you will use its power wisely. Sounds like just what we need, Alan said inserting his key into the console. With a pull of the throttle, the armor zord split and the arms of the megazord pulled off. The bottom half of the construction vehicle split in half as did the rollers. They attached onto the megazord's feet with the rollers on its heels, while some panels lifted upward, revealing green lines going across. The treads were now going vertically up the sides, revealing a large red caution light in the center, as well as releasing a construction helmet. The upper unit expanded, allowing it to fit over the Megazord's chest, with the drills pointing straight up. The lower part of the drill disconnected, revealing larger fists. In these spots, the girls' zords reattached as the zords were given larger fists. The Megazord's helmet folded back and behind it, allowing the construction helmet to fall on snugly. Raceway Megazord. Geo Armor Mode. The Titan pounded its fists together, ready to fight. I don't care what outfit you wear, you power pukes won't stop me. Heavy Duty declared. We'll see about that, Sam challenged. The Megazord used its new wheels to roll forward, allowing it to punch Heavy Duty hard. Ow, is that the best you got? Heavy Duty demanded as he was pushed back. He swung his claw at the Megazord, only for it to block with its own fist. The resulting collision destroyed the claw. No, but this is, Drill Force Blast. Alan shouted victoriously. The drills pointed forward and spun at full speeds. A bright green energy blast fired from the drills, destroying Heavy Duty. The overtime wasn't worth it. Heavy Duty declared before he exploded. That's how you do it. Naruto began. Green Ranger style. Alan finished with a laugh. The five rangers made their way back into the cyber garage, intent on helping where they can. Okay, this is cleaner than I expected. Rebecca said surprised. Because you stopped him before the quakes got too bad. Ricky said with a smile. You all did great today, especially you little brother. Oh we have a problem. Ariel said, you didn't fight heavy duty at full strength. What? Carla asked after a moment of silence. According to our scans, heavy duty's giant form wasn't proportionate with his original body, the armor was 10% weaker. Alpha explained confused. 10%, that's it. Naruto asked confused. It was almost like the energy sphere lost power. Ariel explained. First Technoclaw steals data, now this. Sam asked concerned. What's Damacron after? Alan asked confused. However Naruto wasn't so certain this was Damacron behind this. Sometime later at a long since abandoned military base, Technoclaw made his way through the dust-covered halls. He scanned the halls, looking for what he was after. After making a turn, Technoclaw chuckled darkly. Found it. Technoclaw walked over and picked up a large container. Foolish humans. He was unaware Damacron had a portal behind him. Meanwhile back in the Leaf Village, the council was abuzz over what to do with Naruto. He must be found. Homura bellowed infuriated L.Y. How could one boy disappear so easily? Hiyashi Hyuga demanded. Why didn't he just go to prison like he was supposed to? However everyone present nearly jumped out of their skins at what happened next. The door to the council room was destroyed. Through the clouds of smoke and debris, a very, very, upset Tsunade stood in the remains of the door frame. Where is Naruto? Tsunade, what a pleasant surprise. 
Danzo said through his teeth. Don't dodge the question, where is he? Tsunade bellowed infuriated L.Y. We don't know, Shika Nara began with a sigh, knowing it was a horrible idea to lie to her now. The warden from Hoyazuki framed him for attacking the rakage, so these three, he pointed to Danzo, Kaharu, and Homura. Thought it would be a good idea to send him there without evidence. Time to go, Kiba's mother, soon suggested quickly. Everyone nodded in both agreement and horror, quickly heading for the hills, with Danzo disappearing in a blast of smoke. The duo of conspiring elders however weren't so lucky. Tsunade, listen to reason, was all Kaharu got to before Tsunade's fists bulged with anger. Meanwhile, Danzo was furiously walking through his secret base. He purposely implanted Tsunade's IV bags with medication to ensure she wouldn't wake from her coma. How could she have awoken so quickly? No matter, we'll just have to go to plan B, Danzo said sinisterly. Order up, Ricky called out, sending a plate of food to the window. Coming, Naruto said, suppressing a yawn, and grabbing the plate. Late night again, Ricky asked concerned. It's the mad doctor herself, Carla said, grateful for the promotion of line cook, and assembling a salad. She's really running us ragged the past few days. Running us ragged, is putting it mildly. Sam pointed out, flipping a burger on the grill. The mad doctor has been putting us through villains past Power Rangers fought through the Simu deck, even Lord Zed. Rebecca reminded, twisting her neck. I'm still stiff from that fight. And let's not forget she even felt the need for us to fight recreations of the monsters we've already fought, Alan reminded. Hey Nate, why don't you go down to see if out new tenants need any help? Ricky suggested discreetly, as he returned. Naruto nodded, getting the hint. Slipping into the back, Naruto pulled out his command key, and inserted it into the door to summon the elevator. Arriving in the cyber garage, he saw Alpha in his recharge station. Even the robot is tired from Ariel, Naruto said with a sigh. Ariel was looking over some scans down in the cyber garage, in an attempt to find the next amulet fragment. She had tiredly searched over and over again for the third fragment. For three days, she looked without sleep. Someone looks tired, Naruto said, walking in with some coffee. I've been busy, Ariel said sharply. You know we could help you, Naruto offered. I can do this myself. She shot back rudely, all right geez, I'm just saying. The ninja said, holding his hands up. It was here, Ariel was given an alert. It's from Phil, she questioned confused. One of your friends, Naruto asked concerned, adopting a serious expression. Yeah, its coordinates are on the outskirts of town. Ariel said, assemble the rangers. It's done, Phil said timidly. He was a scrawny man with brown, balding hair clad in a stereotypical lab coat. Good work, Toxamora smirked victoriously, behind her was a rather large monster. It was a bulky white armored knight figure. He had an antenna on the back of his helmet, with a parabolic dish-like shield in one hand with a black radio tower lance in the other. Now to get rid of some power pukers. An abandoned warehouse, how did we not see this coming? Alan asked sarcastically. Because the haunted house and old mill were taken. Sam replied with the same tone. The rangers walked up to the building on the outskirts of the city, only to be stopped by Naruto. I don't like this. Why, there's nobody here. Carla pointed out. Exactly, no guards, not even any evidence that somebody's been here. Naruto pointed out. It's a trap, Sam said flatly. Oh big time, Rebecca agreed. Then let's set our own, Naruto said with a smile. Hello. Alan asked confused, opening the door. Only to see, nothing. Coast is clear. Sam, Rebecca, and Carla walked in, surprised. Wow, nobody's here, Carla commented. Not two seconds later, the four rangers were surrounded by Oni Knights. He called it, Sam admitted, as the four got into a fighting stance. Let's do this, Rebecca said excitedly. The Oni Knights charged, and the rangers took them head on. Sam punched one into a nearby pile of boxes. Carla grabbed a fallen chain and swung it around. Watch it, Alan ordered, dodging a wild swing. Sorry, she admitted, dropping the chain. It's cool, Alan said, grabbing the chain's other end. Carla immediately picked up on what he was doing. The duo pulled hard, 
catching three oni knights in their stomach area, causing them to fall to the ground. Rebecca then flipped over the line, her hair flying wildly, allowing her to kick a few oni knights. I hope Naruto's having fun, Sam said under his breath. Naruto was climbing through one of the windows on the upper level, leading to an office. The idea was he would slip in after the others. In truth, Naruto would have liked Carla to join him, because of her intelligence, but that plan got vetoed. Apparently, Carla wanted to make sure there wasn't a bomb in the opening. So far so good, Naruto muttered, only to see the place still abandoned. Are we sure this is the right place? Naruto asked into his communicator. I'm more than certain, Alpha explained, sounding worried. I don't like this either, Ricky admitted concerned. There should be something. There has to be someone. Ariel bellowed, I'll keep low eye. Naruto barely dodged a familiar stinger. Guess who Red Ranger? Toxamora scoffed victoriously. Great, one of Damacron's flunkies. Naruto groaned annoyed, where's Phil? Where you'll never find, Toxamora challenged, extending her blade. I hope you don't mind, but I need to step into something a little more appropriate for the occasion. Naruto said, going for his morpher. Nitro Force, kick it up. In a flash of red light, Naruto had become the Red Nitro Ranger. Drawing his Excel blade, Naruto charged. Toxamora swung her blade, deflecting the attack. The two clashed repetitively. No teammates to back you up this time. Toxamora taunted with a smirk. You really want your ass kicked huh? Naruto smirked. You only wish. Toxamora shot back. The scorpion pushed the Red Ranger back a few feet. She attempted to stab Naruto in the chest only for Naruto to draw his nitro weapon in melee mode and block it. Nice try, Naruto laughed tauntingly, you accursed human filth, Toxamora bellowed, losing her cool and charging. Toxamora wildly swung her blade at Naruto, as he dodged it. Wow Sting Queen, you can't handle the truth, huh? Naruto laughed, enjoying this more than he should. Quit mocking me, Toxamora demanded, no, it's fun. Naruto shot back swinging his sword so it pushed Toxamora out the door. She looked up to see the other rangers, running up the stairs. And I thought we were having fun. Carla said dryly. We'll meet again rangers. Toxamora vanished in a wisp of green smoke. She was acting strangely. Naruto pointed out, confused. However, Naruto's communicator went off. Naruto, where are you? Ariel demanded infuriatingly. What are you talking about? I'm still at the warehouse. He asked confused. Naruto, respond. This got the other's attention. Ricky, come in. Alan said into his morpher, trying to get his brother. It was here. Carla tried a different approach. She called them on her phone. Guys what's going on? Why haven't you guys answered your morphers? Alpha asked confused, as Ricky put her on speaker. We're trying, but something's blocking the transmission. Naruto pointed out. I think I've got the location, it's on the roof. Ariel explained, looking over the scans. We're on it, Naruto said, then turned to the others. After they get Morphin. With pleasure, the others said, as Carla hung up her phone. Nitro Force kick it up. The remaining four rangers morphed, as they ran up to the higher levels. Reaching the roof, the five looked to see Phil, working a large computer terminal, hooked up to a large satellite dish. Rangers. Phil turned to them remorsefully. I'm sorry, they threatened my family. Why are you sorry? Carla asked confused and concerned. I'm why, Seda Knight cackled, firing a sonic pulse at the rangers. The blast sent the rangers flying away, just reaching the edge of the roof. I'm Seda Knight, and your connection's been severed. Not going to happen, Carla, Sam, get rid of that dish, Alan call it in. Naruto ordered. I'm on it, armor weapon on. Alan summoned the Geo Lancer and spun it around, attempting to strike the monster. Distortion wave. Satan Knight fired a sonic wave, causing Alan to lose focus. He tripped over his own feet, falling near Satan Knight. Bye bye, Green Ranger. He raised his lance, attempting to stab the Ranger, only for Red to immediate come to Alan's rescue. Open fire. Naruto pulled out both his Nitro weapon and Excel blasters, full strength. Satan Knight caught the attack into his shield, and deflected the attack. I'll take that, Rebecca tossed her claws grappler out, grabbing the shield, 
and beginning a game of tug of war. Let go, Seda Knight demanded, or I could do this, Naruto suggested. He fired a concentrated ice blast near Seda Knight's feet, creating an ice patch. The results caused the machine to slip. Ow, Seda Knight groaned, rubbing the back of his sore head. Alan recovered quickly and grabbed the Geo Lancer. He attempted to strike Seda Knight with the jackhammer tip, only for the knight to roll over on his side, dodging the piercing strike. Seda Knight grabbed his lance, causing Alan to be pushed back. Naruto caught his friend, as Rebecca backed him up, firing a series of rounds with her Excel blaster. What does this thing do? Carla asked Floored at the complete algorithm in front of her. It's a high-frequency multiverse tracking system. Phil admitted sorrowfully. It can track all the fragments. Including the ones at our base. Sam asked confused. Phil frightfully nodded. That's what this whole thing was about, stalling time. Carla realized. Time for some old school tech support, Sam said, adjusting his knuckle dusters. He pulled his fist back, and prepared to do a massive punch. Only for the Blue Ranger to recoil in pain once his fist connected. Okay, bad idea, really bad idea. Unique polymer finish, busting it open won't be easy. Carla summarized. Now you tell me, Sam demanded infuriatingly. We could always push it off the roof. Carla. Okay, Sam shrugged. The two rangers began to push, only to find it wouldn't budge. So, you going to help or what? Carla asked Phil, who shook his head. If I interfere at all, Toxamora said she would kill my family. Phil said nervously. Fine. Just go hide in a corner somewhere, Sam said with an angered grunt. It was here, Naruto was thrown into the main console. Ow, he groaned. They're getting beaten, Ricky said, looking over the screen. I know, there has to be something we can do, Alpha said nervously. Maybe there is, Ariel said, getting an idea. If we can isolate the frequency, maybe I can redirect it to a more appropriate target but we would need one of the rangers to jack into the satellite's mainframe first. Alpha reminded. I'll send Carla a text and tell her to get on it. Ricky said, whipping out his phone. What makes you think she's respond quickly enough? Ariel asked confused. They're teenagers, it's practically all they ever do. Ricky said with a shrug. Not five seconds after the message was sent, Carla did as the text asked her. Wow, that was fast. Alpha said with a shrug. I told you, Ricky smirked. Being the owner of a popular teen hangout has its advantages from time to time. All right, we need about four minutes for the frequency to be properly isolated. Carla explained, seeing the results. You won't get the chance human filth. Seda Knight declared. Onik Knights. A swarm of Oni Knights soon covered the roof. And here I thought this would be easy. Sam said rhetorically. Just keep them off my phone. If the connection gets severed we may never stop it. Carla explained, pulling out her katanas. Naruto was then thrown over by where they were. As if we didn't have enough problems. Do you ever stop nagging? Sam asked with a humorous smile under his helmet. Well somebody has to, Naruto joked back, kicking away an Onanite. Otherwise nothing would get done around here. Boys, play nice. Rebecca called out, slashing one Onanite with her Excel blade. Are they joking at a time like this? Ariel asked incredulously. You sound surprised, Ricky said with a smile. It's their way of dealing with the stress. This could mean the end of the world. Ariel pointed out, sounding frightened, trying not to let an exhausted yawn out. It's who they are, the rangers are still teens that make mistakes. Alpha explained with a nod. That's why Demetria hasn't stepped in until recently, she believes in their potential. Maybe you need to as well. Ricky admitted. Yeah, maybe. Ariel admitted reluctantly. She constantly pushed the rangers, almost to their breaking points. But no matter what happened, the five always stuck to it. Alan rolled to the side, then quickly recovered the Geo Lancer he dropped. We can't even get close to finish this. He pointed out, his armor's too thick. If we could get a clear shot with the Geo Lancer, we might stand a chance. Naruto agreed. I'm on it, Rebecca said, pulling out her claw. She shot the grapple out, and hooked onto Seda Knight's shield. She gave it a hard tug, pulling the shield away. No, Seda Knight groaned. Geo Lancer go, 
Alan shouted victoriously. He struck the monster with the jackhammer tip, cracking the armor. You pesky power pukers. Satan Knight grabbed his lance and thrusted it forward, releasing a sonic blast. The rangers dodged the attack, while it hit the command satellite. Damn it! Carla rushed at it, grabbing her phone, while Naruto grabbed her. Holding onto the rail, Naruto barely had enough strength to pull the two up. So, what did you get? Naruto asked hopefully, seeing the destroyed remains of the scanner. Some corrupted data, but we should be able to decipher it back at the cyber garage. Carla said disappointed. Be grateful we have something. Sam said with a smile. Uh, where's Phil? Rebecca pointed out. He's the least of your worries. Satan Knight pointed out, reclaiming his shield. He fired a sonic blast, sending the rangers off the building. Landing with a thud, the five heroes quickly recovered. These suits are a lot more durable than I give credit for. Alan groaned in pain. And final words power fools. Satan Knight asked with a smirk. Yeah, bring them all together. Naruto ordered, right, the other four said in unison. They assembled the Grand Prix Saber, with Alan attaching the Geo Lancer to Naruto's sword. It now covered the weapon so the jack hammer tip was pointing straight up. Grand Prix Saber, Drill Custom Mode. Naruto held the weapon up, as if was red to strike. He stabbed it straight into the ground, releasing a powerful shockwave. Oh no, the shockwave ripped Satan Knight apart, destroying him. Well, time to upgrade my service package. Toxamora said with a shrug, tossing down an energy sphere. I'm in a whole new league now. Satan Knight cackled. Guys, zords, and make it snappy. Naruto called out into his morpher. Already pressing buttons, Alpha said with a laugh. The first five vehicles were deployed, and ready to fight. All right, let's go straight for the Megazord. Naruto declared. Right, the other four agreed. Insert Go Go Power Rangers 2014 by Pelic. The cannons on Naruto's fire truck shifted down and around as it folded in half at the middle, giving it the appearance of a torso. The cherry picker shifted to where the left shoulder should be. The front of the girl's zords flipped around, revealing connector ports. The yellow zord attached to the right side while the white attached to the left. The fronts became shoulders as they folded down. The rear ends shifted back revealing black hands. The bulldozer zord split down the middle vertically as the back shifted up, taking on the appearance of lower legs. These two portions went on the ends of the tank zord's treads, as the claws shifted around, becoming shin guards. This configuration stood up, becoming the lower legs. The tank cannons folded up, and slipped into the ice cannons of the fire truck zord, becoming a full body. A head shifted out of the fire truck. It had a silver grill face mask with yellow colored eyes. It had a red sports car like helmet with two wheels on either side of its head. On the front of the helmet was a signal light going from left to right red, yellow, green. Raceway Megazord, the five rangers said in unison, while the mech took a fighting stance. End song, I'll jam your signal rangers. Satan Knight cackled venomously, the Raceway Megazord drew its saber and got into a fighting stance. No one noticed Technoclaw salvaging a few parts from the now destroyed satellite dish. The Megazord swung its sword, which was caught in Satan Knight's shield. The monster pushed it back, then struck the Megazord with his lance, causing the metal titan to stumble back a bit. He's relying too much on that shield, we have to destroy it. Carla summarized. Alan get rid of it. Naruto ordered. I'm on it. Geo Armor Zord, ignition. The Green Ranger declared. The Drill Zord was summoned to the area. No sooner than it landed, the Zord split apart, then latched onto the Megazord. The bottom half of the construction vehicle split in half as did the rollers. They attached onto the Megazord's feet with the rollers on its heels, while some panels lifted upward, revealing green lines going across. The treads were now going vertically up the sides, revealing a large red caution light in the center, as well as releasing a construction helmet. The upper unit expanded, allowing it to fit over the Megazord's chest, with the drills pointing straight up. The lower part of the drill disconnected, revealing larger fists. In these spots, the girls' zords reattached as the zords were given larger fists. The Megazord's helmet folded back and behind it, allowing the construction helmet to fall on snuggly. Raceway Megazord. Geo Armor Mode. 
The Titan pounded its fists together, ready to fight. So what? I'm not afraid of some road work. Satan Knight cackled. He swung his lance, only for the Megazord to swing its fist, destroying the lance. With another swing, the shield was destroyed. Uh oh. Satan Knight groaned horrified. Uh oh is right. Demolition crash knuckle. Naruto ordered. The Megazord's arms raised forward, the drills spun around, empowering the fists. It charged forward, releasing a powerful punch, destroying Satan Knight. I've been disconnected. Satan Knight groaned horrified. That's how you do it. Naruto started with a smile. Power Ranger style, the five declared victoriously. Back at the cyber garage, the five victorious rangers walked out of the elevator. Another win for the good guys. Naruto said with a smile. You all did great, but where's Phil? Ricky asked confused. We don't know, probably went to make sure his family's okay. Carla shrugged. What? Ariel asked confused. What family? He was orphaned at a young age, and wasn't married. Wait, so he lied to us then? Rebecca asked confused. Before anyone could say anything else, Alpha's instruments went off. I've found the third fragment, he said with joy. The others crowded the robot, seeing the location. It's in the bottom of Seastone Lake. Alan asked confused. Seastone Lake was a lake connected directly through to the Pacific Ocean via a series of underwater tunnels. Sam got a rather uncomfortable look on his face. You guys will go, tomorrow, take the rest of the day off. Dr. Jones said with a weak smile, before collapsing in a chair, falling asleep. Cool, day off, Naruto said with a smile. The other rangers couldn't help but agree, while Sam looked a little upset. Meanwhile, on a plane leaving the country, Phil looked at a Polaroid of Dr. Ariel Jones. In a familiar shade of green were the words, do it for her. At this moment in the Leaf Village, Tsunade was furiously slapping her rubber stamp onto the various forms of paperwork. Sakura continued to slip in more pages for her master to approve, trying not to say anything at all. Sakura was one of the few against sending Naruto to blood prison, but her pleas went on deaf ears. You've been strangely silent Sakura, Tsunade admitted after some time. It's nothing milady, Sakura lied, it's about Naruto, isn't it? Tsunade asked rhetorically, Sakura's silence was all she needed. I know Naruto will be infuriated, but I have something that might ease the pain, she gave a slight smile. I'm promoting Naruto straight to Junin. Ju Junin. Sakura asked surprised, but I thought you had to go through years of testing first. Ordinarily, yes, but as Hokage, I have the right to promote someone if they have defeated an s rank ninja in the bingo book. Tsunade said with a smirk. Taking a sip of sake, one thought passed her mind. Let's just hope it convinces him to stay. Are we there yet? Naruto complained for the thousandth time. In about twenty minutes, Carla said, looking over her GPS. Dude. I thought you were used to long-term trips. Alan asked from the driver's seat. The five had borrowed Ricky's RV, and were headed up to the five-hour long drive to Seastone Lake, in hopes they weren't too late. To avoid suspicion, they avoided using the teleporter, so they took the long way. Yeah, with me leaping from tree to tree, with the possibility of fighting an enemy ninja, this is boring. Naruto groaned, bored out of his mind. Good excuse, Carla said sarcastically. The sooner we get this fragment, the sooner I can work on my tan. Rebecca said, already in a black and white two-piece bikini. Joy, Sam muttered under his breath, sitting at the table. It was then he got a flashback, seeing himself just under the water's surface. Hey Sam, you've been pretty quiet since we beat that glorified ham radio, what's up? Alan asked, seeing his friend's distraught face in the rear view mirror. The blue ranger just shrugged. You can make a radio out of pork? Naruto asked confused. No, it's an old, old way of communications. Carla explained, looking up from navigating. Then why do they name it after ham? Naruto asked. No idea, Carla decided to end the conversation at that. Meanwhile, back on the warship, a rather fishy woman walked through the halls. She had fish male armor on with a lustrous color scheme of blue and green to it. On her shoulders was piranha-themed armor. Her legs had black eels wrapped around like stockings. A lone red starfish covered most of her face like a mask, with black lipstick drawn on the front, 
which delicately missed her gills on her neck. She had bright blue hair and pale white skin. Her feet and hands were webbed, in her hand was a large gray trident with a curved blade at the opposite end. Everyone, meet Serenina, Alucardic said with a smirk. This is your latest plan, Damacron demanded confused. But of course, I am the fastest swimmer in six planets. Serenina boasted. I'm looking for a diver, not a swimmer. Damacron pointed out. Think nothing of it, I'll get you your precious gem, no problem. Serenina turned heel and left at that. Well, she seemed lovely. Toxamora scoffed. That's one way to put it. Sylvian agreed. Alucardic, here's an energy sphere for your pet goldfish. Damacron said, passing the object through his portal. I expect results. Of course master. The bat said, taking a bow. He turned to leave at that. Where's Technoclaw? Damacron demanded, setting up some new scanner for us. Toxamora explained, not interested. Good, I have an assignment for you too, watch him closely. Damacron ordered, pleased with the news. Uh, okay, why? Sylvian asked confused, because, I don't believe he's with the game plan, and leave it at that. Demorcron ordered, shooting out some lightning bolts. The two generals were blasted to the wall. Okay, we'll go. Toxamora gasped in pain. The RV was parked up on the cliff side, seeing the deep pool of water that is Seastone Lake. Love the view, Naruto said, now wearing red trunks and a Hawaiian t-shirt. All right, I did some research, Carla began, wearing clip-on sunglasses, an oversized hat, and a one-piece yellow swimsuit. In her hands were a series of papers. There is a rental hut nearby that gives out snorkeling gear. Our best shot is near the center of the lake. So glad the doctor made our cells waterproof. Alan said, wearing a black wetsuit with a green stripe. Really, a wetsuit? Rebecca asked in disbelief. What? This was the first thing I grabbed. Alan said with a shrug. Great. Sam said, walking out in his usual clothes. What's with the dress code? Carla asked confused. I figured I would stay near the beach and contact you guys if one of Damacron's cronies shows up. Sam said sheepishly. Okay, Naruto said with a smile, approving the plan. As Sam went off, Naruto got a concerned look on his face. Someone needs to keep an eye on him. He's been acting weird ever since we found the location. Rebecca pointed out, equally distraught. I'll talk to him, Alan offered. The others nodded in agreement with the Green Ranger's plan. Down on the beach front, Sam had gotten himself a burger, and slowly started nibbling the piece of meat. It had to be a water rescue mission. Dude, Alan ran up and found the Blue Ranger. What is your damage? I don't know what you're talking about. Sam offered quietly, slowly. The Blue Ranger walked away, only to stumble, and almost fall into the coming tide. Seeing the look on the Blue Ranger's face, Alan instantly pieced it together. He grabbed Sam by the back of the shirt and pulled the boy onto the sand. Sam, why didn't you tell us you're afraid of water? Realizing he was caught, Sam decided to come clean. Yeah, I am. He sat down and began his story. When I was five at this lake, some of my cousins thought it'd be funny to dunk me into the water. He shuddered at the memory. Only problem is, I got caught in a current, and I drifted for a while. So you've been afraid of water ever since? Alan asked concerned. Sam reluctantly nodded. Just then some rather violent sounds were heard not too far away. Almost in tune, Alan's phone went off, revealing Naruto. Guys, it looks like a few Oni Knights have hit the beach, and not for some fun in the sun. Naruto said, the sounds of a motorboat engine could be heard in the background. We'd be there, but Carla said we're almost at the fragment. Got it, we'll hold off on the spandex routine until the crowd disperses. Alan said with a smile. Please and thank you, Rebecca said, hanging up for Naruto. That's my phone you know, Naruto reminded flatly. Oh shut up Nate, Rebecca joked. Using the discarded umbrella, Sam swatted away a wave of Oni Knights. With the beach being so crowded, neither he nor Alan could morph. One fired a few rounds from its cannon, which Alan narrowly dodged. The Green Ranger quickly delivered a punch into its stomach, forcing the Onanite to the ground. Not that I'm complaining, but why isn't there one of Damocrin's goons around here? Sam asked, dodging a swipe, then doing a spin kick. 
I think I see why. Alan pointed out to sea, seeing Serenina, riding a large patch of ice out to the lake. Right where Naruto and the others were. Oh, damn. Sam gulped horrified. We have to go, Alan said, worried for the others. It was here, a familiar bat-winged blade appeared before the two. Going somewhere rangers, Alucardic asked sarcastically. Yeah, we're going to get Morphin. Sam declared. Alan nodded in agreement. Nitro Force, kick it up. A quick flash of light, and the green and blue rangers appeared. Time for some seaside fun, Sam said, drawing his Excel blade. I would thought you'd never ask, Alan said, pulling out his blaster. Sam ran first, swinging his blade at Alakadic who effortlessly blocked it with his own. Hello, and goodbye, Alan fired a few blasts at Alakadic who barely dodged it. Like I haven't seen that one before, Alucardic said with a smirk. Like a bat, flapping his wings, he swung his swords at the rangers, sending them back. Try for the armor weapon, Sam suggested, realizing their attacks wouldn't get far. I swear, that's all you guys need me for, Alan said with a laugh. Not so fast, Alucardic declared rushing the two rangers, blades out. Sam quickly defended Alan, causing him to fall into the water. Oh no, Alan gulped, seeing how badly Sam was struggling. Ha ha, the blue one can't swim, go figure. Alucardic laughed, he crossed his blades in an X pattern above his head. Sonar pulse, the sonic blast emitted from the blades sent the blue ranger further out to sea. Sam, Alan called out horrified, nitro weapon on. Alan summoned his axe and charged, horrified of what would happen to his friend, should he take too long. Meanwhile, Back with Naruto and the girls, the boat had finally reached its destination. All right, looks like you have to dive down about 20 feet to get the fragment. Carla explained, looking over her phone. I'll stay here and monitor your progress, you go down and get that fragment. Easy, Naruto said, diving in. Why piece of, Rebecca began, only to feel a strange chill in the air. The two turned to see Serenina arrive having converted most of the lake into ice. Good day rangers I am Serena, now where is the fragment? Serena asked rudely. Sorry, we don't have it, so we have to do this. Carla said with a smirk. Rebecca nodded in agreement. Nitro force kick it up. The white and yellow rangers appeared in a flash of light, and leapt to battle. Fortunately, the ice float was big enough to hold all five rangers and the monster. Claws out, Rebecca said summoning her claw, while Carla called out her katanas. Sorry rangers, but this fish doesn't get caught. As Carla ran up and attempted to strike the fish, Serena blocked it, and pushed her back. She catches you instead, Serena pointed her staff and fired a powerful icy blast at the girls, who narrowly dodged it. All right, how do you fare against spear fishing? Carla rolled to the side, creating her bow, and fired a few energy arrows. Serena blocked the attack, and pushed the yellow ranger back. Try this rangers, Serenina raised her hands and the water behind her rushed at them. The two female rangers dodged the attack. At the same time, Naruto was pushed away at the sheer might of Serenina's attack. Okay, that's weird, Ariel said, looking over the scans back at the cyber garage. What, that the rangers get to go to the beach, and we don't? Alpha asked sarcastically. No. I'm picking up a strange disturbance at the Pacific Ocean. The doctor soon began to insert some commands. Like the tides are shifting unnaturally. Hey guys, I'm back, and I got the fragment. Naruto said, finally surfacing holding a yellow gem. It was here, Serena took note of this and lunged at the Red Ranger. Uh oh, Naruto quickly doved back down, and was engulfed in a red flash of light, indicating he had become the Red Ranger. As Serena dove under after him, the two female rangers watched as blaster fire could be seen. He has to surface soon, Carla said worried, our suits only give us seven minutes of underwater respiration. Really, I would have thought that would be shorter, Rebecca admitted. Meanwhile, Sam was struggling against the current, using every ounce of his strength. However, his own fears kept pushing him back. In doing so, he kept thinking about that day. However, one memory tried to come up, in regards to Naruto. Flashback. Dr. Ariel was going over the scans with the two fragments they already had. 
I'm sorry Naruto, but it's just not going to happen right away. She said, remorse filled her tone. Ariel had spent the last few days trying to get Naruto home using the fragments. Using her research, she had actually gotten a map of the elemental nation on screen, which was located several miles northeast of Japan. Ah well, Naruto said with a shrug. Then we'll just find some more. Dude, you're trying to get home. Sam asked incredulously. Aren't you considered a wanted criminal? Well yeah, but if I don't get back to the leaf, the Akatsuki aren't going to stop themselves. Naruto pointed out. Um, last I checked, you're still a wanted man. Carla brought up. Aren't you afraid of what will happen? The truth is, I'm always afraid. Afraid I'm not good enough. Afraid I'll die the next day, Naruto admitted with a shrug. But if I don't buck up, nothing would ever get done. I can't disagree with that statement. Carla agreed. No one could disagree with the Yellow Ranger's statement. You are all kinds of weird, you know that. Sam asked with a smile. It's all part of my charm. Naruto said with a laugh. End flashback. All right Sammy boy, you can do this. The Blue Ranger thought to himself as he slowly started to struggle through the water. In doing so, he could faintly make out a familiar purple glow. Naruto was pulled up by the girls, as Serenina resurfaced, holding the fragment. And they say diamonds are a girl's best friend. Well this is fabulous, Naruto said, sarcastically. Now for some high tide fun. Serenina swung her trident, and created a wave, sending the rangers back to shore. I so don't want to tell the rental guy we lost the boat. Carla groaned. She turned slightly to see Alan on his back too. So, you guys are having a bad day too huh? He asked dryly. You could say that, where's Sam? Naruto asked worried. Yeah, it turns out he can't swim, and a Lucardic pushed him out to sea. The Green Ranger admitted as the other three got to their feet. Lovely. Naruto groaned. It gets better. A Lucardic smirked revealing himself, Serenina and a swarm of Oni Knights. Armor weapon on, Sam shouted from behind, firing an energy harpoon, nailing Serenina and causing the fragment to go into the air. Everyone turned to see the Blue Ranger, holding a large light blue and black sniper rifle-like weapon. It had two turbines attached to each side, just above the rear of the weapon. Its barrel had a five-pronged harpoon attached to the front of it, which was attached to the main unit by a series of black cables. Meet the Tsunami Striker. Cool, Alan smirked. Thank you Demetria, Carla said, causing Rebecca to look at her oddly. Who else would it be? True, Alan admitted. Sam raised the blaster, and fired at a Lucardic, who got inches away from the fragment. The attack sent him several feet away. Onik Knight's charge, Serenina ordered angrily. The monsters charged, intent on getting the third fragment. Rangers, get to work. Naruto ordered, drawing his Excel blade and nitro weapon in sword mode. The other followed suit, with Alan grabbing his axe, Rebecca holding her scatter gun and Excel blaster, and Carla holding her katanas. Let's get it on, Sam agreed, firing a few more rounds of the striker. Alakadic ran at the blue ranger, who blocked it with his blaster. Sam rolled, just as Alan slammed the axe into the bat's midsection. Time to say hello, and goodbye. Carla smirked, slashing several Oni knights. She was nearing a rock formation, and put one foot on it, getting herself into the air. Quickly pulling out her Excel blaster, the Yellow Ranger blasted them again. Naruto blocked Serenina's trident as she attempted to stab him. He pushed her back, and went in for a low sweep, kicking up some sand in the process. Now let's find out what this thing can really do. Sam smirked. He fired several rounds at the Oni Knights, one of which was sent into a Lucardic, sending him crashing into the rocks. The blasts sent several Onanite far, with Serenina blocking the rounds that almost hit her. Soon she found herself blasted repetitively, a victim of Rebecca's attacks. I never could stand sushi, the White Ranger said smugly. Naruto rolled to the side as three Oni Knight fired at him. Sam instantly backed him up with use of his new blaster, knocking them back. One Onanite quickly approached Sam, who turned and fired a new round of the Tsunami Striker. That thing is awesome, Naruto said with a smirk. Oi Red, less drooling, more butt kicking, Carla declared, slashing two Oni Knights. Sorry, 
Naruto chuckled, blocking two attacks by crossing his blades. Guys, fragment, Alan pointed out, seeing one of the Oni Knights grab the stray fragment. Uh oh, the other rangers lunged for it, only for Serenina to fire a blast of frozen water, pushing the five away. Two slow landlubbers, Serenina cackled, as she was given the fragment. Rangers, bring them all together. Naruto roared, angered. The rangers assembled the Grand Prix cannon, with the tsunami striker sliding underneath as the trigger shifted towards the middle, with the harpoon expanded. Sam then grabbed said blaster, with the others holding him. Grand Prix cannon hydro custom mode, fire. Giving the blaster a quick pump, it fired a massive energy harpoon, sending Serenina to her doom. The shockwave sent the fragment into the air, not far from Alucardic. Well as much as I hate the smell of fish, make that monster grow. Alucardic recovered and tossed the energy sphere. As he did, Alucardic grabbed the fragment. Time for some high tide fun. Serenina boomed victoriously. Serenina jumped into the lake, raising her trident, the ocean waters in the lake quickly rose up. Rangers, you have to stop her. Ariel bellowed horrified over the comms. Uh, shouldn't we get the fragment? Naruto asked confused. Ordinarily, yes, but Serenina can control the water in Seastone Lake, which is connected to the Pacific Ocean, Alpha explained, horrified at his scans. If she gets too much control, Serenina could flood the entire continent. And she could easily find any other fragment. Carla summarized horrified. The Megazord won't get at her easily, it doesn't have the right sea legs. Sam pointed out. Now that Blue Ranger, Demetria said, appearing in a flash of light as a problem I can easily fix. With a snap of her fingers, Sam had an aqua blue key in his hand. Thanks boss lady, Sam said gratefully, running to the rising tide. Aqua armor zord, ignition. It was here, Serenina was blasted by a series of energy torpedoes. The armor zord surfaced, revealing itself. It was a light blue exploration submarine with black racing stripes. It was equipped with a pair of high beam lights on either side. It had three turbines to propel itself, with two being on the side of the vessel, and one larger on its back. On the Zord's smaller turbines were large black javelin-like blasters, which fired the torpedoes. Its rudders looked more on the lines of an arrow's fletching. Awesome, Sam said impressed. Guys send the other Zords, we're going to need them. Naruto called into his morpher. Already on the way, Ricky said, pushing some buttons. And don't forget to bring me back a t shirt. Done, Alan said, as the five massive vehicles were summoned to the area. All right, Rangers, time to see if the Megazord can hang ten. Sam said with a smile. I don't get it, Naruto admitted. Insert Go Go Power Rangers 2014 by Pelic. The cannons on Naruto's fire truck shifted down and around as it folded in half at the middle, giving it the appearance of a torso. The cherry picker shifted to where the left shoulder should be. The front of the girl's zords flipped around, revealing connector ports. The yellow zord attached to the right side while the white attached to the left. The fronts became shoulders as they folded down. The rear ends shifted back revealing black hands. The bulldozer zord split down the middle vertically as the back shifted up, taking on the appearance of lower legs. These two portions went on the ends of the tank zord's treads, as the claws shifted around, becoming shin guards. This configuration stood up, becoming the lower legs. The tank cannons folded up, and slipped into the ice cannons of the fire truck zord, becoming a full body. A head shifted out of the fire truck. It had a silver grill face mask with yellow colored eyes. It had a red sports car like helmet with two wheels on either side of its head. On the front of the helmet was a signal light going from left to right red, yellow, green. Raceway Megazord, the five rangers said in unison, while the mech took a fighting stance. End song, the Megazord leapt up and landed on the top of the Aqua Armor Zord. The mech rode off, intent on stopping the sea witch. You pesky power pukes can't stop me. Serenina cackled, firing several water torrents at the rangers. The Aqua Armor Zord dodged the attacks, with the Megazord swerving. The fish monster fired a blast of ice, in hopes of freezing the machine. That's not what they mean by the cold shoulder. Sam pointed out. Uh, Sam aren't you forgetting something? Rebecca asked rhetorically. Oh right, armor link up. Sam admitted sheepishly. 
The raceway Megazord leapt into the air as the sub split. The smaller turbines attached to the back of the Megazord's legs. The cannons attached to the back of the shoulders. The rest of the Zord expanded as a small face mask came out. The Zord slipped over the raceway Megazord, with the control window on front, and the back turbine pointed down. The mask attached itself to the Megazord's face giving it the appearance it was wearing a one-piece snorkeling mask and tube. Raceway Megazord, Aqua Armor Mode The mechanical titan jumped onto the ice platform as it took a fighting stance. That's just one big can of tuna for me to open. Serenina cackled, running forward. The Megazord used the turbines to navigate across the ice better. The two titans clashed, with the Megazord delivering the first punch. The attack pushed Serenina to the ground. She responded by swinging her staff slamming it into the Megazord's chest. It stumbled a bit but quickly recovered. However Serenina fired a freezing blast, trapping the Megazord from the waist down. It's over rangers, I'll flood this whole city if I have to. The fish cackled. Care to do the honors? Naruto asked Sam with a smirk. With pleasure, Harpoon burst cannons full power. The cannons folded forward, as blue energy swirled around them. A powerful water-based shot blasted out, connected into a large energy harpoon and blasted Serenina for good. I've been hooked, Serenina said, crashing to the ground. As the ice began to melt, the rangers cheered in victory. That's how we do it. Blue Ranger style, Sam finished with a smile. On the warship, Alucardic was presenting the Master with the third fragment, only to be electrocuted by Damacron. But Master, why? because it took you this long to find one damned fragment, and the rangers already have two. Damacron roared agitatedly, not to mention none of you know where the core fragment is. We're looking into it master, I assure you, Technoclaw said, hiding behind a pillar. Damacron didn't believe him, so he tossed a lightning bolt at him too. Back in the RV, the rangers were packing up, feeling kind of hollow. So in the end, Damacron gets a key to his freedom. Alan said with a sigh. Hey, we still have him two to one, that's a plus. Carla pointed out. The two noticed Sam, sitting on the pier, enjoying the cool breeze. It took me long enough, Sam said with a smile, grateful he was finally over his fear of water, for the most part. So Sammy boy, you're afraid of water huh? Rebecca asked, appearing right behind him with Naruto next to her. You do know the only cure right? Naruto said with a smile. Oh no, Sam said horrified. Before he could react, Sam was pushed into the lake. Not funny, Sam said, surfacing. But this is, cannonball. Naruto said, jumping in after him. Geronimo, Rebecca declared, joining them. Oh what the hell, Alan said, running after them. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Carla agreed. The five rangers started to splash one another having fun. Though today they had lost the third fragment, there were still more, and as long as they stood together, the Power Ranger were going to make sure Damacron wasn't going to win. Tsunade looked over the ninja in front of her, Yugao, Guy, and Neji. You three are going to be sent on a very important mission, retrieving Naruto. Without me, a voice said from the now open door. Much to Tsunade's irritation, it was Hinata, or rather, who she had become. Hanada now had her jacket opened up exposing the fishnet mesh that made her S look bigger. Instead of her usual long pants, Hanada now wore a rather small mini skirt over biker shorts. On her irritated face was a light pink lip gloss. A.N. Basically think Genjutsu World Hanada. Hanada, this mission is for Junin and Anbu only, you're still a chunin. Tsunade said irritated, her obsessive crush on Naruto had really changed her personality. Naruto is my fiancé, I won't leave him behind. Hanada snapped rudely. Lady Hanada please, you're too emotionally attached to Naruto to think properly, you would only, Neji began both calmly and respectfully. You shut your damned mouth Neji, I am your superior in every way. Hanada shot back. Hanada, enough, Tsunade bellowed infuriated, my decision is final. Just wait until the council hears about this. Hanada threatened, turning to leave. Yeah, I'm so terrified, Tsunade said, her tone filled to the brim with sarcasm. With both Kaharu and Homura hospitalized, her threat wasn't taking place anytime soon. Not that it would, 
as Tsunade had begun looking for replacements for them and Danzo. However Danzo had up and vanished, even to the point where no one had seen Sai since. Milady, but I thought there weren't any traces of the boy. Yugao brought up confused. True, but we may have found a way to bring him back, Tsunade began, a look of seriousness appeared on her face, handing them a scroll. I need you three to go to this location and hand them the note attached. All right, who are we meeting? Neji asked confused. No one, a familiar voice said, in a puff of smoke. They all turned to see Fukusaku had arrived. We are to leave Naruto B, for now. What? Tsunade asked confused. The great sage has had a prophecy, one involving Naruto and several others. The elder said, distraught in his tone. He will lead a team, in hopes of stopping a threat unlike any other. What? So then why don't you reverse summon him so he can train for this? Tsunade asked confused. The great sage said no, he must remain where he is. Fukusaku admitted, however Tsunade caught something in his tone. All of you are dismissed, at once. Tsunade said sharply, no one dared question her. As soon as everybody left, Tsunade looked at the old toad with the most serious expression of all. He's outside the veil, isn't he? Best we can figure, yes. Fukusaku said with a sigh. You know full well outside the veil is the very limit of our reverse summoning, it's the only answer. Otherwise, he would have been here by now. Tsunade said, dropping in her chair, then taking a swig of her hidden bottle of sake. What trouble have you gotten into now boy? She thought, unaware a certain heiress was watching through her by a kugan. I am in so much trouble. Naruto bellowed through his muffled scream. Pull the trigger thing at your right hand. Ricky said over the calm link. But it was too late. Naruto crashed the motorcycle into a bale of hay on the side of the track. I am so glad we went with the heavy padding. Ariel admitted, seeing Naruto chuck off his helmet. Why are we doing this again? Naruto asked confused, feeling the seal on the back of his neck. He and the other rangers were brought to a motorcycle track for training as Ricky put it. Apparently, she had been working on some new weapon which required the rangers to work motorcycles. Because it's part of our training. Alan brought up, munching on a candy bar. We all passed dude, you still haven't fearless leader. Ha ha, Naruto said dryly, slowly getting up. Half your problem is you don't pull the brake during your turns. Carla pointed out. I tried, something's up with it. Naruto groaned. But, in the meantime, you all have to come through on your collective promises. Oh yeah, that stupid run for the hungry thing. Rebecca said somewhat annoyed. The other day some people put up a flyer for a charity run, and instantly got Naruto's attention. So after some convincing from Naruto, the others decided to join in. I swear you are too eager for this. Sam pointed out. Well yeah, this is probably the only chance I have to show off my skills, what with this stupid tattoo on my neck. Naruto pointed out. True, let's go it's almost show time. Alan pointed out. The rangers headed off, despite Ariel's protests. The kid needs a break, you forget, he's never ridden a proper bike before. Ricky reminded, seeing her face. All right true, what could happen? Ariel admitted. Up on the warship, Sylvian was presenting the others with the answer to Ariel's question. It was a large wooden tiki-like monster clad in burning grass armor and painted red, yellow, and orange. Around his arms, ankles, and neck were blazing flames. He twirled a fire staff around in his hands. Everyone, meet Hotfoot, Sylvian said, fanning himself from Hotfoot's intense heat, presenting the monster to the other three generals. A hot head, this is your plan, Toxamora asked confused. Of course, I'll be able to burn the entire city and from the ashes, I'll take the fragments the rangers have. Hothead sneered. This is the best you could do, Toxamora asked rhetorically. Considering we only have the one fragment, yes, Sylvian reminded. Don't remind me, Damacron said, startling Sylvian. Now here's a new energy sphere, don't waste it. Of course master, Sylvian said nervously, grabbing hot foot and running out the door. Well this should be fun, Toxamora scoffed. In the meantime, Damacron said, startling the remaining three generals. I have tracked a new fragment, get it at once. Of course, the trio shouted in fear. The rangers, 
decked out in runners' outfits to match their colors, soon found their way to the starting line. Ariel was given the morphers for safety reasons. Refresh my memory, why are we doing this? Rebecca asked confused. Because I know you and I asked nicely. Naruto said flatly. Shut up Nate, Rebecca answered in the same tone. It will be good for my cardio, I've been feeling sluggish in my movements lately. Carla admitted. I'm also not losing to any of you. Alan said with a smirk. Is that a challenge Greeny? Sam asked why. Let's do this. The two said with a smirk. It was here, a few members of the race were crowded around someone. Oh joy, Mike is here, I thought he didn't do charity. Carla groaned, recognizing the crowds. Who's that? Naruto asked confused. Angela's nephew, he's the most selfish brat there lived. Carla said clearly angered. His dad owns stocks in 30 different companies and basically became a multimillionaire overnight. She shook her head. He literally throws his money around just to get attention. Rich kid that got everything he wants. Naruto asked, knowing the type before. I always hated those types. You know that type. Alan asked confused. Let me put it to you this way. One kid ordered his dad to buy a circus. Naruto explained, as serious as they get. Damn son. Sam said impressed. Well I'll be dipped, if it isn't Carly. Mike sneered walking over. He stood about an inch shorter than Naruto with slicked back black hair. He wore a rather expensive looking track suit. His eyes were concealed by black sunglasses. Here to get handouts. This is for the hungry, and you're clearly well fed. Carla shot back angered. I'm just here to show off, as winner of the race. Mike chuckled darkly, turning to leave. Nate, beat his ass. Carla ordered darkly. In combat no, in a race and or humiliation by prank. Yes. Naruto said with a smirk. If you plan to prank him, count me in. Alan said with a smirk. The rangers all took their positions at the starting line. All right everybody, ready set go. The official declared, shooting the starting gun. The five rangers and their competitors ran off, planning to win themselves. Go for it guys, Ricky declared from the crowd. How did you talk me into this? Ariel asked rudely. What? The kids need some fun. Ricky said with a shrug. It was here, Ariel's phone went off. Alpha, what's wrong? I'm picking up an intense heat signature moving towards the rangers. Alpha said worried, hopefully it's nothing, but I'll keep you posted should something develop. Thanks, but we can't contact the rangers for a bit. Ariel reminded. We may not need to. Ricky said, seeing hot foot running towards the rangers on the next street. Oh we may need to get back to the office, Ariel suggested nervously. And we may need something else, Ricky realized. Naruto had pulled out an early lead, with Mike not far behind. Surprised he could keep up, Naruto muttered under his breath. It was here, Naruto started feeling warmer, not unlike when he visited the Suna deserts. Instantly, Naruto looked around, seeing nothing. That was weird, seeing the heat return to normal. I don't like this. The racers soon made their way to the first break marker in the park, allowing everyone to take a glass of water or sports drink. No way am I touching that stuff, Naruto said, as Carla offered him one. I don't even know half the ingredients on that. And yet you eat several cups of ramen at a time, Carla reminded. At least I have a better understanding of what's in it, Naruto countered. Carla couldn't argue with that. It was here, the blazing heat returned only far more powerful than last time. Again with this. I think I see why. Sam pointed out, seeing hot foot running past. And we were having so much fun. Rebecca said dryly. And us without our morphers. Alan reminded. Just then, an assortment of blasts went off, right near the racers. The contestants turned around to see a series of Oni knights, riding armored four-wheelers. The crowd quickly dispersed, with the rangers going into the forest. Mike however passed out in fear. I count twenty of these things. Sam said, seeing the monsters roll around. Just then, a loud honking noise was heard. The rangers turned to see a massive blue semi-truck and trailer with black racing stripes roll over. Hi guys, meet the Nitro Mobile Commander. Ricky said with a smile from the driver's seat. Wicked cool captain, Naruto said with a smile. It was here several of the Oni Knights raced over and fired. Rangers, 
Get Morphin already. Ricky ordered. That's my line. Naruto said, as Ricky tossed out the morphers. Naruto was in the middle of adjusting his morpher, when two Oni Knights charged at him, getting off their rides. Nitro Force kick it up. The other four declared, activating their morphers. Guys go, I'll hold them off. Naruto ordered, kicking one Onanite off him trying to get his morpher. You sure? Carla asked concerned. Naruto's response was punching one Onanite and tossing another over his shoulder. He's good, Alan said, realizing Naruto didn't need help. They rushed to the back of the commander, where Ariel and Alpha rolled out the Nitro Raiders. Five high-tech motorcycles modeled like Yamaha YZFR Sixa and painted to match their respective colors in black. Thanks Doc, Alpha, Sam said, as they mounted their rides. The rangers rode off in hopes of catching up with Hot Foot. Their hopes were confirmed as they quickly caught up with the fire monster. Well I'll be, you power pokes can keep up. Hot Foot cackled, but it's not enough to keep up with me. Au contraire, Alan smirked, firing a few laser blasts from his raider. Hot Foot quickly swerved around the attacks and turned, firing a few fireballs. The raiders took the blast, and skidded off a moment, before returning to their original positions. These things are fireproof, good to know. Carla said grateful. Naruto pushed one towards the commander's door, where Ricky opened it up, slamming it into the goon's body. Well that went well, Naruto said amused, seeing the last of the Oni Knights were down. But something doesn't add up, you don't think there's a fragment here, do you? No, it's worse, Ariel said, ushering Naruto inside. Alpha had several screens revealing a map of Meteor Falls, as well as the rangers' positions. If my calculations are correct, and for once I hope they aren't, Hotfoot is aiming for this natural gas line. Alpha explained. And that would be bad, right? Naruto asked, never hearing of a natural gas line before. Let me put it to you this way, if that fireball gets there, he'll create a goodbye meteor falls sized kaboom. Ricky explained nervously. So, I need to get on my raider and help the others. Naruto said, nervous about riding a motorcycle again. Yes, now get going. Alpha said with a smirk. All right, Nitro Force kick it up. Naruto declared nervously, becoming the Red Ranger. He got on the Red Raider and rolled off, a little slowly though. This is not going to end well is it? Ricky asked rhetorically. And you yell at me for not having faith in the Rangers. Ariel reminded, before Ricky shot her a look. Sam, try your striker. Carla suggested, here goes, armor weapon on. Sam summoned the Tsunami Striker, and fired several rounds with one hand. Being that it was one-handed, Sam missed several times, however did trip up Hot Foot a bit. All right Rangers, open fire. Alan said as all four Rangers fired the blasts from the Raiders, knocking Hot Foot back a bit. Try my open flames. Hot Foot tossed his baton, which became a flaming wheel. The Rangers moved their bikes around the attack, only to hear an all too familiar scream. Help me, Naruto begged, as he crashed his raider into Hot Foot, having lost control. The two tumbled into a nearby warehouse. The raider was scratched up and dented quite a bit, while Naruto was on his back. I am so glad I still heal decently, he admitted, in a great deal of pain. Hot Foot, however, wasn't so lucky. Ow, my leg, I think you broke my leg. He summoned a new fire baton and used it as a cane, trying to ease pressure on his left leg. The other rangers drove in, and went to help Naruto. You can handle your zord, but not a motorcycle. Rebecca asked confused. There is a world of difference, and I am just grateful this suit is padded the way it is. Naruto groaned, getting up. Onik knights rise, hot foot declared as a squad of the monsters showed up. Rangers, let's go for it. Naruto declared, pulling out his excel blade. The rangers followed suit, with Naruto lagging behind a bit, still feeling injured. The rangers changed, each taking four oni knights. And here I thought nothing good would come of this race day. Rebecca said, pushing three oni knights back then kicked a fourth one into another. You try to do the right thing one time. Naruto groaned before wincing in pain. Two oni knights tried to take advantage of this, only for Naruto to pivot and fire several rounds of his excel blaster at them. My aim is getting better, awesome. 
Naruto said with a smile. Point blank shots don't count. Alan reminded, punching one who got to close. Carla rolled to the side, and fired three shots out of hers, destroying three oncoming ones. Sam meanwhile ended up fighting Hotfoot head on. With his broken leg the way it was, Hotfoot was moving rather slowly, and was unable to move properly. Try a few proper rounds of this. Sam shouted, firing a few rounds of the tsunami striker. The attacks nailed Hot Head right in the face. Try mine ranger. Hot Foot tossed a flaming baton at Sam, temporarily losing balance in the process. The attack hit dead on, throwing the blue ranger away. Hang on Sammy boy, we're coming. Alan said as the other four rangers ran over. In doing so, Naruto temporarily huddled over in pain feeling an all-too-familiar sensation originating from his stomach. It's just like when I fought him. Naruto groaned, remembering a boy in monk clothes. It was then, Naruto was covered in a dark orange aura. Naruto, what's going on? Carla asked confused. Move, Naruto ordered in a darker tone. He then ran at Hot Foot faster than before, and slammed his fist into Hot Foot and caused the Tiki to stumble back. Naruto was about to strike again when his aura vanished as quickly as it arrived. What was that, and can you do it again? Carla asked impressed. No, not right now to both of those question, now we bring them all together. Naruto said, somewhat out of breath. The rangers knew what he meant and assembled the Grand Prix saber with the tsunami striker attached to the tip of the blade, extending it like a fishing rod. Grand Prix saber. Hydro custom mode. Naruto swung the sword, casting out an energy fishing line. The attack snared Hot Foot and threw him into the sky, then gravity did the rest. Damn, it, all. Sylvian said, stumbling into the warehouse out of breath. He was just too fast. I was wondering if we'd see one of you. Sam admitted. Time to make my monster grow. Sylvian pulled out the energy sphere, but found he had just enough strength to toss it, supersizing Hot Foot. Try me on a high flame rangers. Hot Foot challenged. Guys, we need the Zords. Naruto declared into his morpher. You got it red, but I expect a full explanation of your power boost later since the race is called off. Ariel ordered, as she launched the five Zords. The Rangers hopped into their respective Zords, and inserted their command keys. It's Megazord time, the five Rangers declared. Insert Go Go Power Rangers 2014 by Pelic. The cannons on Naruto's firetruck shifted down and around as it folded in half at the middle, giving it the appearance of a torso. The cherry picker shifted to where the left shoulder should be. The front of the girl's zords flipped around, revealing connector ports. The yellow zord attached to the right side while the white attached to the left. The fronts became shoulders as they folded down. The rear ends shifted back revealing black hands. The bulldozer zord split down the middle vertically as the back shifted up taking on the appearance of lower legs. These two portions went on the ends of the tank zord's treads, as the claws shifted around, becoming shin guards. This configuration stood up, becoming the lower legs. The tank cannons folded up, and slipped into the ice cannons of the fire truck zord, becoming a full body. A head shifted out of the fire truck. It had a silver grill face mask with yellow colored eyes. It had a red sports car-like helmet with two wheels on either side of its head. On the front of the helmet was a signal light going from left to right red, yellow, green. Raceway Megazord, the five rangers said in unison, while the mech took a fighting stance. End song, the Megazord took out its sword and charged at hot foot. Nice try rangers, but you're not getting that close to me with this firewall. The Tiki fired a blaze at his feet, creating a wall of fire. The intense heat caused the Megazord to take several steps back. It's too hot to handle, Rebecca said, horrified of the heat. Easy pickings, aqua armor zord, ignition. Sam called out, summoning the submarine. The zord then separated, combining with the megazord. The raceway megazord leapt into the air as the sub split. The smaller turbines attached to the back of the megazord's legs. The cannons attached to the back of the shoulders. The rest of the zord expanded as a small face mask came out. The Zord slipped over the raceway Megazord, with the control window on front, and the back turbine pointed down. The mask attached itself to the Megazord's face, giving it the appearance it was wearing a one-piece snorkeling mask and tube. Raceway Megazord. 
Aqua Armor Zord. The five declared, as the Megazord took a fighting stance. The cannon folded forward, firing a large stream of pressurized water, hosing the attack and monster down. Stop, Santo, stop it. Hot Foot ordered, spitting out some water. The Megazord stopped, as its cannons folded behind it. I have always wanted to do this move for some reason. Carla admitted. Me too, don't feel bad. Sam said with a smile. Tsunami Stomper. The jets thrusted the Megazord into the air, then back down again, as a whirlpool was created at the Megazord's feet. The attack connected, ripping Hot Foot apart. I was put out too soon. The monster declared before dying. Now that's how we do it, Power Ranger style. The five rangers declared victoriously. Back on the warship, Technoclaw, Toxamora, and Alucardic returned empty-handed, but with good news. We found not one, but two fragments. Toxamora grabbed a newspaper from her side, and showed everyone the good news. However one person wasn't too thrilled about the idea. And yet you're back here why? Damacron demanded throwing out some lightning bolts in anger. The blast electrocuted the trio, full powered. After their punishment was served, Technoclaw walked to his quarters, revealing a large machine of some kind. On a workbench to the side were a few shattered remains of a sword. Soon King Mondo, you will be avenged. He gloated, unaware Sylvian was watching from the shadows. Back down in the cyber garage, Naruto was laying on the med bay table as the scanners went over him. Naruto told them his tale. A few months back, the Leaf Village was under attack by some anarchists who were under the impression we should serve the fire daimyo, not the Hokage. As it turned out, their leader siphoned off some of the Nine Tails chakra during the original attack the day I was born, and implanted it into his own son, Sora. Fascinating story, but what does that have to do with your power boost? Alpha asked confused. I'm getting to that part. Naruto explained. After the leader undid Sora's seal, my own demon chakra was forcing itself out, and what I felt was almost the same thing. No but the leaf village is how many miles from here? Carla reasoned. Unless you coming in contact with the fragments has something to do with it. No, it felt like more than just the nine tails chakra was trying to come out, it's hard to explain. Naruto said, uncertain himself. Well you're fine now right? Sam asked concerned. Yeah, more than, Naruto admitted. Guys, we have a problem. Alan said, looking at his phone. He showed the rangers something that made Naruto's blood boil. Mike was declaring himself the Red Ranger, and he wore a fancy gold necklace with not one, but two amulet fragments in it. He would make a proper announcement with the other rangers tomorrow. Apparently we have to go crash a party. Naruto growled angry, something that made Rebecca a little cautious. Naruto was presently in the Simu deck for target practice with Rebecca. The two were blowing off steam from Mike's little reveal of him being a fake ranger by shooting targets. Why bastard, I swear the next time I see him, I'll shave him bald. Naruto growled angered. Yeah, you do that. Rebecca said absentmindedly. Naruto looked at the white ranger oddly. You okay Rebecca? Naruto asked concerned. You're acting weirder than Sam did when we found out about the Seastone Lake fragment. Nothing, it's nothing. Rebecca lied. Clearly Naruto didn't believe her. The truth was, Rebecca was frightened of Naruto right now. After he lost control of the Nine Tails chakra momentarily, she started to have her doubts. Sure, Naruto said doubtingly, but realized she wanted to drop it. Oi, sweat heads come on, we got a party to crash. Carla said coming into the room. Coming, the duo said in unison, however Carla noticed Rebecca's look. On Damocrine's warship, the Oni Knights were giving a final look over to Technoclaw's newest robot, Air Raid. It was a large World War II bomber-themed monster with a pilot's cap on. His three-pronged claws rotated in victory as his machine guns on the edges of his wings were loaded. Pre-flight check is green, ready for takeoff. At ease soldier boy, Toxamora scoffed, rolling her eyes. So this is your big idea? Sylvian asked confused. Air superiority. This way the rangers can't even hit their mark. Technoclaw answered snidely. Fine, I'll allow it, here's an energy sphere for good luck. Damacron said, half amused. Air Raid and Technoclaw headed out, with Technoclaw absorbing part of the sphere. You don't trust him, do you? Sylvian asked confused. Not by a long shot, 
but his technical work is our best shot at finding the remaining fragments. Damacron admitted. Agreed. Sylvian commented. Back on Earth, Naruto was holding down the back of his collar as Carla put her smartphone near the tattoo seal. The rangers were presently hiding in the Nitro Commander not too far away from the party. From what we've been learning about Chakra from your bio scans, this should temporarily disable the seal. I feel a little bit of my chakra, not much. Naruto admitted, feeling a slight burning sensation. You sure this is safe? What about if your roommate gets antsy too? Rebecca asked confused and concerned. Two separate systems, this only targets the one. Carla confirmed. With her work done, Naruto put his hands together in a cross symbol. In a brief poof of smoke, Naruto was now wearing a waiter's outfit, his skin tone was now lighter by several shades, erasing his whisker marks. His eyes were now green, and his hair was now jet black and combed off to one side. All right, this will only last for about 10 minutes, so get the fragments and go. Naruto put on a pair of black rimmed glasses, outfitted with a micro camera on the bridge, inserted an ear communicator, and headed off. Camera is on, let's do this. Ricky said from his spot in the driver's seat. Naruto walked in, and grabbed a serving tray, keeping his ears opened. Mike's no ranger, he wet himself at the sight of spiders. He heard one guest say with a laugh. Or heights, there's no way it could be him in that giant robot thing. Another agreed. Well, that's actually comforting to hear. Naruto said with a light chuckle. Do you see Mike in the fragments? Ariel asked over the comms. You'd think so, but no. Naruto admitted, however he did see someone else. I've got Angela in my crosshairs. Sure enough the witch was presently trying to make herself look good for the camera near the sushi bar. Evidently nobody was buying it. This is going to be good. Naruto snickered. Naruto, what are you? Ariel began, only to get her answer. Naruto had carefully placed a bit of wasabi on the floor from another tray. Angela turned and walked a bit, steeping on the wasabi, slipped, landing face first into a bowl of the stuff. Ah, she screamed bloody murder and dunked her head into the punch bowl. Twenty points red that was awesome, Carla said with a smirk. That's our boy, Sam cheered. Yeah, our boy, Rebecca said quietly. All right Spill, what's your damage? Carla demanded, turning off her mic so Naruto couldn't hear. Rebecca didn't answer. Is it because of what happened yesterday? because Naruto lost control for a bit. Alan asked concerned, her continued silence was enough of an answer. That was a one-time thing, he got control over it quick. Sam reminded. Yeah once, what if Naruto loses control even more? Rebecca asked confused and somewhat scared. Unlike before, he's got us. Alan reminded. Naruto said it himself, that wood guy usually seal it off, but he didn't trust him, and he trusts us almost immediately. He puts his trust into us every day, and we've always returned it, tenfold. Carla explained, crossing her arms. Time we do the same. Ricky pointed out, seeing Air Raid arrive with some Oni Knights. Hold off on morphing, we don't want to give us away yet. Ariel explained, showing signs of concern. You got it doc, Sam said, running off, with Rebecca lagging behind. Kids having a hard time trusting the others. Ariel pointed out. It's not completely her fault, I remember she had always been like this. Ricky explained, she almost went to juvie, something about a few kids faked being her friends so Rebecca would take the fall, something about a prank gone horribly wrong. It's next to impossible to get her to trust people again. Fortunately for her, Alan and the others stepped in and vouched for her. The White Ranger needs to work with the others, not just herself. Ariel explained, somewhat sympathetic of the girl. Hey party crashers, it's invite only. Carla said with a smirk. Power Rangers, nothing my Air Force can't handle. Air Raid smirked, as the Oni Knights ran forward. Then I guess it's time to ground them. Alan said, as the four Rangers took a fighting stance. Three Oni Knights charged first, as Alan dodged, slamming his arm into one's back. Carla followed up with a split kick, sending the other two back. Sam grabbed one Onanite and threw him into another, while Carla leapt over him. This allowed her to spin kick an Onanite into another. Rebecca then slammed her fist into another, then grabbed its leg, 
tossing it into a trio of oncoming goons. Try my artillery. Air raid fired several bullets out. The four rangers barely made it out in time. Guys, my disguise wore off, Naruto said in horror over the comms. I'm behind the kitchen dumpster, but I found out Mike's still upstairs. We'll send out Rebecca for backup, but we're kinda stuck with a glorified jet. Sam said, dodging one of Air Raid's attacks. Wait, there's a monster outside, and nobody's looking outside. Naruto asked confused. It's not the first time this has happened. Alan reminded. True, Naruto said with a shrug. Go, now, Carla ordered. Reluctantly, Rebecca ran off to help Naruto, knowing they wouldn't leave it. To quote a friend of mine, let's get Morphin. Sam said with a smile. Nitro force kick it up. In a flash of light, the blue, yellow, and green rangers appeared. I'm going to enjoy this, Sam said, drawing his tank blaster. Carla grabbed her bow, while Alan spun his crossbow. Well, let's see you catch this flyboy, Air Raid said with a smirk. His jets took off, and grabbed hold of Carla, taking off. Hang on girl, Sam and Alan shouted in horror. Rebecca found Naruto behind the building, looking into an upper window. Glaring, she saw it lead into Mike's bedroom. Found a way in yet. Just one, if you trust me enough. Naruto said with a smirk. What? Rebecca asked confused. Ricky had his calm on and you inadvertently told me. Naruto said with a shrug, reminded of how nervous Sakura was around him after the whole thing at the Tenchi Bridge. I get it, you're scared of the fox. That's putting it mildly, Rebecca said disturbed. I know. It freaks me out too sometimes, but right now we have to look past it. Naruto said, holding out his hand. You with me? Yeah, I guess. Rebecca slowly took his hand, realizing he had a point. Great, now we got about six minutes before those laxatives I spiked into his drink will wear off. Naruto said firmly. Where did you find laxatives? Rebecca asked confused. Found it in Angela's purse. With all those fake coffee drinks she orders, it's no surprise. Naruto said with a shrug, only to see Rebecca's disapproving look. The damn necklace has two giant rocks on it, I was just making sure she didn't hijack it. I would be madder, if you didn't have a point, she said flatly. Just then, Mike was tossed out from the top floor, and out jumped Technoclaw, the two fragments in his normal hand. How did you get in? Naruto asked confused. Camouflage mod. The robot shrugged. I need one, in the meantime, ready. Naruto said, kind of jealous before turning to Rebecca. Nervously, she nodded, as all ever be. Nitro force, kick it up. The white and red rangers appeared, both ready to fight. Although white did look a bit more nervous than usual. Let's do this tin man. Naruto said, drawing both his swords, while Rebecca took out her claw. Gladly. Technoclaw said transforming his claw. The two rangers charged, Naruto swung his blades however the machine dodged them. Rebecca shot out a grapnel line and grabbed him at the normal hand. Hand over the fragments, Rebecca ordered, or what? Technoclaw sneered, throwing his arm, and tossing the ranger over his shoulder. He then activated his rocket boots and flew off in the same director air raid was going. Uh, doesn't he have a teleporter? Naruto asked confused. Ow, I don't know. Rebecca slowly limped over, evidently twisted her left ankle. Come on, we'll get you back to the others, and get you patched up. Naruto said, putting her arm around his neck. This allowed her to relieve pressure on the affected area. After how distant I've been, you're still trying to help me. The white ranger asked confused. We're a team, it's what we do. Naruto said as an all too familiar flash of light appeared in front of them. Sam and Alan were riding on their raiders trying to keep up with Air Raid, who had yet to let go of Carla. You thinking what I'm thinking? Alan asked. Oh yeah, armor weapon on. Sam summoned the tsunami striker and fired a few rounds. However Air Raid tossed the yellow ranger aside, landing near the warehouse district. Ah, only the three of you, Technoclaw said rudely, landing. This will be easier than I thought. No it won't, Naruto declared, woozily running over with Rebecca lagging behind. She had a splint on her ankle. I love and hate that teleporter all in the same breathe. What happened to you two? Carla asked, 
seeing the two acting friendly. I got over it, Rebecca said with a smug grin. Then let's see you get over this, Onik Knights. Technoclaw summoned several goons. You got this, Naruto said, turning to Rebecca. Obviously, she said. Demetria, the remaining three rangers asked humorously. Oh yeah, armor weapon on, Rebecca said with a smile. In her arms were two metallic silver tonfas. At the base of each rod portion was a turbine. Arrow tonfas, she spun the weapons, creating small tornadoes, which were sent at the monsters. This just got a whole lot easier, Sam said impressed. All weapons out, let's do this special, Naruto said, grabbing his swords. Well, if you insist, Alan said, twirling his axe around. Sam adjusted his knuckle dusters, while Carla spun her katanas around. Let's do this rangers, Rebecca said with a smile, charging. She swung her weapons at the enemies, with the others not far behind. Technoclaw, still holding Mike's necklace in his hand personally dealt with Naruto. Sam punched one Onanite, allowing Alan to slam his axe into another, which caused the two to collide into each other. Carla backed up Rebecca as she slammed the Tonfa into one of Air Raid's rotors. Carla took her weapons and quickly dragged them across the monster's chest. Carla jumped up, and kicked Air Raid, pushing him back and dislodging her weapon. Try these for a spin. Rebecca spun around creating a small tornado, and rammed into Air Raid, pushing him almost to the water. I'll enjoy severing you into pieces Red Ranger, Technoclaw said, slashing at Naruto. The two collided blades, with Naruto blocking with his nitro weapon. Naruto pulled his arm back preparing to hit him with his Excel blade. Just as he did, Technoclaw moved his arm, allowing Naruto to shatter the necklace in half. One fragment flew towards Karla, while the other was caught by Air Raid. I got it, the plain monster said, you sure did, Toxamora said, hiding in the shadows nearby. And I got this one, Karla said putting it in a container, teleporting it away. Acceptable losses, Technoclaw said with a shrug. I got them, Air Raid said, flying at high speeds towards the rangers. Carla swung her tonfas in front of her, allowing a tornado-like shield to be created in front of them. The attack disoriented the plain monster. You thinking what I'm thinking? Rebecca asked with a smirk. After you, Naruto said equally happy. The rangers assembled the Grand Prix cannon with Rebecca's weapon attaching underneath. Grand Prix cannon, arrow custom mode, Rebecca declared, swinging the blade as the other rangers supported her. The swing created a massive updraft sending air raid into the sky. As he fell, a barrage of blades swirled around in a tornado-like fashion, destroying him. The fragment he took had bounced off, and landed in Technoclaw's hand. Damn! that thing's harder to destroy than I thought, Naruto said, somewhat impressed. Time for some air relief, make my monster grow, Technoclaw declared, tossing an energy sphere. In a flash of light, Air Raid was revived and giant-sized. It's time for some heavy winds now, the monster cackled. I am so grateful he is a robot, because that would have been all kinds of gross if not. Naruto admitted disturbed. A fart joke now, Carla asked confused. The moment called for it, Naruto shrugged. Just so you know, the Zords are on the way, Ricky said over the comms. Thank you, the five said, jumping into their vehicles. Insert Go Go Power Rangers 2014 by Pelic. The cannons on Naruto's fire truck shifted down and around as it folded in half at the middle, giving it the appearance of a torso. The cherry picker shifted to where the left shoulder should be. The front of the girl's Zords flipped around revealing connector ports. The yellow zord attached to the right side while the white attached to the left. The fronts became shoulders as they folded down. The rear ends shifted back revealing black hands. The bulldozer zord split down the middle vertically as the back shifted up, taking on the appearance of lower legs. These two portions went on the ends of the tank zord's treads, as the claws shifted around, becoming shin guards. This configuration stood up, becoming the lower legs. The tank cannons folded up, and slipped into the ice cannons of the fire truck Zord, becoming a full body. A head shifted out of the fire truck. It had a silver grill face mask with yellow colored eyes. It had a red sports car like helmet with two wheels on either side of its head. 
On the front of the helmet was a signal light going from left to right red, yellow, green. Raceway Megazord. The five declared as the Megazord took a fighting pose. End song. Catch me if you can. Air Raid cackled only to be shot at by an oncoming airborne vehicle. It was an off-spray helicopter with a stealth copter-like design painted red with yellow, white, blue, and green stripes on the sides. Aero Armor Zord. Rebecca asked amazed. Indeed it is White Ranger. Demetria said creating a hologram of herself in the pit, handing over the key. Now, I believe you know what to do. Oh yeah, armor link up. Rebecca declared as the Megazord jumped into the sky. The pit and lower half of the undercarriage of the armor Zord detached as it linked up to the Megazord's back. The Megazord grabbed onto the underside of the rotors through some handles. The copter's pit attached to the front of the Megazord as the tail split, attaching to each leg. A pilot's helmet shifted from the pit, attaching onto the head. Raceway Megazord, Aero Armor Mode. The Megazord took after Air Raid, firing a few missiles from its back. That's cheating. Air Raid shouted, You're evil, what do you care? Alan said rudely. We need to ground him. Carla pointed out, I'm all over that, Rebecca said, turning her steering wheel hard. The Megazord barrel rolled at high speeds, firing an assortment of missiles. I better not throw up in this thing. Naruto bellowed horrified. Several missiles slammed into Air Raid's back, causing him to lose altitude. Let's end this, Vortex Barrage. All five rangers agreed. The raceway Megazord rose high to the sky and spun its rotor blades full speed, releasing several missiles in the process. The results created a tornado filled with missiles, pinning Air Raid down. I'm not supposed to be afraid of heights were his finals words before his death. Now that's how we do it, four of the Power Rangers began. White Ranger style, Rebecca declared happily. In one of the warehouses, Technoclaw looked up, holding a file with some information he needed in it. Oh well, I still got the one fragment, and that should be good enough for Damacron. The Rangers returned to the cyber garage, ecstatic over their victory and Rebecca overcoming her fears. Oi Rangers, Look clean Demetria's here. Alpha called out. To everyone's surprise, it was the lady in question. Rangers I am afraid my visit was not only to reward Rebecca on her growth, but rather to deliver some news. Demetria said, her voice struggling with control. Clearly it wasn't good news. I have recently learned the location of the core of the amulet of eternal vision. A uh, boss lady, why do you not sound happy about it? Ricky asked confused. For two reasons, the first of which is I will require the rangers bring me five total fragments. She explained. Okay, so where is it then? Naruto asked, only for Demetria's sorrowful gaze to look his way. Because Naruto, the fragment is in Hazuka castle. Demetria explained, regret filled her tone. Hazuka what now? Sam asked confused. Blood prison, Naruto said flatly, clearly disturbed. The ninja Alcatraz you were being sent to when Alpha picked you up. Rebecca asked concerned. Yeah, this job just got a whole lot harder. Naruto said worried. No one could deny, he was talking sense. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.